seemed like a dream because like I mean it seemed so long ago but like I suppose I kept everything inside. Eight off the wall, on the floor, kicked, stamped on. Got us by the hair, breed me head off the wall. The lads in the kitchens in them days were getting raped, buggered, sexually abused by certain officers, screws, Neville Husband and Johnson being the main ones. It doesn't matter what you say, you're wrong. And my worst memory is watching that young lad go to know what he was going through. So you've seen him getting taken out of his bed and, well, you know. We're off again to meet another former Medemsley inmate. This, this is the... Sorry, mate, take your time, mate. Right, hello everybody, welcome back to another episode on the Davy Robson podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now today we have a, a podcast that is a little bit different to our usual ones. Uh, I'm going to give you all a recap of what it's all about before I introduce the guest. So this one's about uh, Medemsley Detention Centre. It was in Concert, County Durham. It was a young male offenders institute and its reign of terror lasted from 1961 till closure in 1988. Uh, the government brought in a regime uh, and they called it the Short Sharp Shock. Now this re regime was to aim to deter young inmates from re-offending. They'd go in here, it'd be strict, there'd be a lot of physical education. Basically it would frighten them to death so they didn't want to go back in there. Now what happened is, uh, say this, this detention centre was active from 61 to 88 and a guy come forward decades after it closed um, reported the abuse. So Derham Police launched an operation, they called it Operation Seabrook. Now what they've done, they've done a public appeal and uh, this sort of opened a can of worms. Uh, 2,000 former inmates came forward, reported extreme acts of brutality by members of staff in Medemsley. There was sexual abuse and there was even rape. So it's uh, it's not a nice story this one guys it, but it does need to be told so i will pre-warn you there'll be a bit of content here that you won't like but um the best way i could describe Lee, what i what i know of 
is if you've got the movie Scum and the movie Sleepers, mix them together, times the brutality by a thousand, you can have Medemsley. So it's like you say, it's not a nice place. I will pre-warn you. So here we go, guys. So here we go. Uh, I'm joined by Eric Sampson. How are you doing, mate? I'm all right, uh, Davey, thanks. Yeah, you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm all right, I. I appreciate you coming down to talk. Yeah, you're man. welcome, Davey, I. Thank you. It's an honour to be here. Oh, good stuff. Um, I just want to tell you, Eric, any time you want to stop, forget the cameras, yeah. forget the real we stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just take your time. You know, if there's anything you're uncomfortable with or any questions I give to you you're not happy with, you know, you just you just say the word, okay, yeah. buddy? So I'd like to say thank you for coming down. We really appreciate it. You're welcome, dear. I know how hard this is for you guys. Yeah. You know, I've met a few years. So here we go, Eric. So what I'll do is a little tiny touch on your background, Eric. All right, yeah. a little tiny touch. Uh, where are you from, my mate? I was, uh, I'm from a little town called Crook. Crook, oh, yeah. Well, now I live in Unwick. Unwick, yeah, yeah. So, right, you ended up at Menham's Lake. Yeah. Uh, what year was that? It was Christmas 1977. 1977. Yeah, it was a savage winter. Savage winter. So, I'll touch a tiny bit on the crime. Uh, yeah. What, what, what was it you got sent for? I was in there, actually, for a crime I never committed. Yeah? I was firing an air pistol. It wasn't me. For firing an air pistol? Yes, I. Bloody hell. And what did you get for that? I got uh, three months detention. Right. Sender. Wow. At Bishop Auckland Magistrates Court. Wow, for firing an air pistol. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even me who had done it. Jesus, that's crazy. So, you know, mate, because there's quite a bit to cover... Yeah. It's quite a serious podcast. Um, I know you and the other guys really want us out there for Joe Public to see what really happened in there. Yeah. So we, we're going to do this. So Madam's Lee, right? I know it was a while ago. I'm going to jog your memory. Go into Madam's Lee. Can you remember that the day you were going there? And Yes, I can, David. Yes, I. Go on then and tell it, talk us through it. I was sent to Madam's Lee from Bishop Walker and Magistrates Court. I think it was the 12th of December, 1977. I was taken there by two police officers in the back of a Austin Allegro car. They only had two doors then, so he couldn't get out the back. Mm-hmm. I think it was about 45 minutes drive from Bishop Walton to concert, and I had no idea what this place was going to be like. I just thought it was a, a children's home at first. Mm-hmm. When I got there, I was taken out of the back of the uh, police car. The big main gates were there. Mm-hmm. There was an officer at the gate who opened the gate, mm-hmm. and I was taken straight through the gate. It maybe it's a five minute walk into reception. Mm-hmm. I'd only been in there five minutes and the violence started. Yeah. The Mickey taken and the violence started straight away. But they'll take the Mick out of you in the van? Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, I was taken to the front of the reception. There was a big desk there. There was an officer on the right hand side with ginger hair. And on the left hand side, there was a Scottish officer. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a red line on the floor, like a, two inches wide and about four foot long mm-hmm. he says put both of your feet on the line and my left foot was over the line and the Scottish officer got up and he handed he whacked his right across the face that was before I got my clothes off took, I, they, they took all your clothes off yet? after I was knocked out on the floor I was laid out for maybe between four and five minutes I got back up he says now put your feet on the line and he says say sir so I said, sir, and he says, strip off, Just take all your clothes off. I had a denim Levi jacket on, a uh, Fred Pretty jumper, a pair of cream towels and a pair of riding boots. Mm-hmm. He says, strip off to your underpants. So I stripped off to my underpants. By that time, I was in a state of fear. You don't know where you, you, didn't, you, don't know where you were at. Mm-hmm. He says, take, strip off to your underpants. So I stripped off to my underpants, and then he says, take, off your, take your underpants off. Mm-hmm. So I took my young fans off and they were both laughing. Well, just stood staring at you, giggling yeah. at you. and there was a, an entrance to your left, and there was a bath in there, and the steam was coming out of red-hot water. Mm-hmm. He says, get in the bath. Well, the water was that hot, I wouldn't dare put my foot in it. Well, did, did they make you go in there? Yeah, he, shoved, he, he literally shoved me in the bath. Wow. All right, when I come out, I got up, when I eventually got out of the bath, my skin was all red. The water was. I said. I said. I tell them. I said the water's too hot. Mm. He, he pushed you down. He pushes me in the bath. Said, that was a Scottish officer. Jesus. All right. So when I got out of the bath and got dried, I went back to where the red line was, mm-hmm. and he gives me kit. Okay. It was a check blue shirt, 
a pair of denim jeans, a pair of grey socks and a pair of black shoes and a, a denim jacket. And then they put all my clothes inside of a box. And by that time, I was in a state of shock. And he says, hurry up. I want to go out for a, a couple of effing pints tonight. I want a couple of effing pints, he said, this Scottish officer. Mm-hmm. The ginger-haired one didn't say a great lot. Mm-hmm. And the Scottish officer says, uh, watch out on a night for officers coming to your dormitories and wanking you off. <sighs> yeah, that's what he said. What, this was a, a guard who's told This was you the that? Scottish officer. Wow. That's what he said, yeah. Jeez, like you say, we have... We've done quite a bit of research. Yeah. Uh, we have went and met some other former inmates who have very kindly come forward and shared a little story. We are going to add that to them. But when we've read into this, I mean, the physical abuse was absolutely mm-hmm. brutal, what I mean. And like you're saying, the sexual abuse, rape. And yeah. So what I, what I ask you, Eric, is, um, you know, say you've been allocated to the dorm. Yeah. Well, I've got me... Your kid was rolled up in a pillowcase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a blanket... Uh, cup, you shaving gear, yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. and I think it was about uh, white soap. It, it was called White Windsor. Mm-hmm. He'd had rode on gunman property. So you got your kids. Mm-hmm. He says, "Get get all your kids," and he walked us down the corridor. And into the, it was still at recreation time. Mm-hmm. It would have been about seven o'clock to end, maybe seven thirty. So I we went straight to the recreation room, and we may, may being only small. I was only four foot six and six stone. How old were we had? Uh, 17. 17. Everybody was laughing because I was that small, see. Mm-hmm. And the officers were just having a smirky grin and that. Mm. And then uh, after 20 minutes, you allocated, I got allocated to the dormitory. Mm. Like my dormitory, there was four beds in it. But when I got there, there was only two lads in the dormitory. There was a lad in from Middlesbrough and there was a coloured lad in from Leeds. He was due out before Christmas, him. He was, uh, he said he only had uh, four days to go and he was getting released. Mm. And then, uh, got ready for bed. You were in bed by uh, 8 30, 9 o'clock. And then, morning come, you're up at 6 30. Mm-hmm. And you got out of bed, you put your jeans on your shoes, and you're in bare skin. And you had to go around the corridors with your towel under your arm. And everybody got counted. Mm-hmm. And then, when you had a wash in the race, she went back to your dormitory. And we may be new in. I didn't do anything that day. I went to see the governor. And then, you scrub floors for maybe, uh, I think it was about maybe seven or ten days. Mm-hmm. And then you were allocated a job. And what was your job? My job was, uh, I got allocated a job in the workshops. All right. I was cleaning plugs with a file. With a file? Aye, uh, with a scraping all the, like, uh, you got a box of plugs. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I had to scrape, like, this powder off the plugs. Bloody hell. So... That, that was after you'd done uh, over a week's scrubbing floors and all that. Mm-hmm. You got your breakfast at uh, about seven o'clock, you sat past seven. Mm-hmm. Once you'd been washed and counted up. Mm-hmm. And then, once I got allocated my job... You started work at, uh, I think it was, you went in the parade yard first on the morning mm-hmm. and you had markers on each thing and you had to march to your marker mm-hmm. and then you were, uh, you went back in the boot room to get changed again and then you'd go up to your job. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, like you said, the, the, the abuse at Madame Lee yeah. was really extreme. Aye. You know, uh, you know, it's well documented what was going on in there by members of staff. So, when did you realise when you were in there that the brutality was going to be excessive? You know, your first time when it really hit home. The first night when I was knocked out by this Scotland officer, I knew then this is going to be hell on earth. Mm-hmm. Now, do you want me to talk about my first abuse, Davy? Yeah, go on, so... Yeah, I'll tell, tell you what, no. Uh-huh. We'll talk about what you witnessed of other inmates getting done first. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Is that all right, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll go on to yours. Okay? Yeah. Go on, bud. So what no. you what you witnessed other inmates? Aye. Doing? Now, the first incident I saw where after being in about four days, when you're marching down the corridor first thing on the morning with your towel, 
it was snowing very heavily and there was one door the corridor what led outside there was one lad made a noise and the officer opened the door and he shoved the lad outside with no shirt on and it was blizzarding with snow in the snow uh -huh. how long did he leave him out there for god knows could have been an hour half an hour it was a long time wow uh -huh. oh dear. so what else did you witness in there while you were in, going on in there i witnessed a uh, a few lads, uh, they were meant to bunny up right round the corridors. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that's a military punishment. Yeah. I, I did uh, read up on a story that uh, one of the guards punished a young boy so hard in the nose, broke his nose. Yeah. The young boy soiled himself. And then the certain guard made him bunny up. Yeah, he did, yeah. All the way at the shower. All the way around, I. With a punch yeah. full of uh, shit. And uh, another incident in the recreation room on the night, there was a lad in from uh, from near me, actually. He was two years older than me. he came come from a travelling family. Mm -hmm. and for, uh, he would have been 19. He was a big lad for a 19-year-old, you know. He could put his hands up like and fight. Mm -hmm. Now, in the recreation room on the night, he was arguing with his lad, and there was an officer who walked over to him. Tall officer. He had the nickname of Broken Nose. Yeah. He was uh, six foot. Kevin Blakely. Yeah, this man had a big nose. I presume that's why he was called Broken Nose. Mm -hmm. Now, this travelling lad, Broken Nose, started shoving him about. So this travelling lad, he actually put his hands up against Broken Nose. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Broken Nose just got all his ears like that. Brought him full force and he headbutted him. Wow. Right on the nose. And everything just burst open. Damn, mate. And the lad was going around telling everybody that uh, he'd been fighting with somebody in the dormitory. And it was him. Yeah, he must have been told to keep uh, quiet about what had happened to him, like. Oh, wow. So, do you want to go on to your, your abuse, yeah? Well, yeah, and, uh, what happened with me was, it was a Thursday tea time. I'd just finished work in the uh, engineering shop where I was cleaning the plugs. Hmm. Went back to the dormitory. You'd get uh, changed, and you'd go down the recess and take a shower. Mm -hmm. I'd only been in the... Uh, dormitory maybe 10 minutes an officer come to my door and says Eric Sampson he says yes sir he says the governor wants to see you mm -hmm. I says what for sir he says never mind what for he says the governor wants to see you so I walked downstairs onto the dormitory and there was four corridors and four doors down at the right at the bottom the governor's office was on the right hand side I still had my jeans on black shoes a striped shirt and had a short denim coat mm -hmm. so I went down to the governor's office now, the governor's name was uh, on the office door, above the top of the door. Mm. I can't mention his name because he wasn't convicted, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, I knocked on the door. He says, come in. So, I walked in. He got up off his desk. The desk was to the right. The, there was the door, and the desk was to the right. Mm -hmm. So, when I knocked on the door, he says, come in. And I went in, and there was a key in the door. And as soon as I got in there, he locked the door. Oh, no. And I thought... What the hell's going on here, like, you know? So he says, someone's pinched a file out of the engineering shop. I said, I haven't pinched no file, sir. He says, someone's pinched a file and they're going to escape with, with this file. I says, no, I haven't pinched no file. And he says, anyway, he says, I want you to take your clothes off. Well, the, I thought, what for? Like, the thought was going through my mind. What do you want to take my clothes off for? Mm-hmm. So obviously, I had to take my clothes off, took my shoes off, socks off, my shirt off, my trousers off. What was this for, like, a uh, strip search? Or? Yeah, I saw, he, says, he said I need to search it. Mm -hmm. So I took all my clothes off, and I was stood right behind the door. Mm -hmm. And when I eventually took my clothes off, I just stood there in my underpants. And he was stood round, his desk was there, and there was a big chair there where he sat. He was stood there. He had a sheepskin coat on, with it been winter time. Mm -hmm pair of black trousers and he had a chain on his trousers with a keys on and he had a pair of brogues on mm. now I don't know what colour his brogues were whether they were black, brown or what so he dropped his trousers down to his ankles oh no yeah and he's un he pulled his underpants his trousers down and he asked me to go around the desk and get all of his private parts oh. by that time I, I wouldn't I wouldn't and I was crying mm. wow so he came round he got all of his trousers, he came round to where I stood and he just got hold of my arm and pulled me round where his desk was. 
Now, he suspended me over the desk like that. Oh, God, and I thought, this man's going to rape me here. And he pulled me underpants down. And he penetrated me with a broom shank. Oh, my God. No way. Yeah, and by that time, I was in a state of shock and I was crying my eyes out. That is awful. Yeah. And when he, when he eventually let me back up, he said, if you tell anybody what I've done to you, I'll, I'll effing kill you. That's what the man said. Oh, wow. That, do you know what? I'm stuck for words. Believe yeah. it or not. And then he says, put your clothes back on. So I put my clothes back on. He says, go back to your dormitory. That night I didn't get a shower. Now I laid on my bed and I was crying. And the lad who was in from Middlesbrough, he asked me what had happened. Mm. And I wouldn't tell him. You wouldn't tell him? No. Do you know what? Since we've been doing this research and like there is obviously a lot of sexual abuse and the rape went on, how how did like they were sworn to silence, you know, through death, what I've been told. Mm -hmm. You know, like they'd say, right, if if you tell anywhere about this, you'll be found hanging in yourself. Yeah, self harmed. And, you, and you're self harmed or um, hanging in the shower room. And you'll be buried on the football field. Yeah, that's what yeah. they used to threaten you with, isn't it? That is awful. So how these um this abuse of the governor, did that stop there and then, or did that carry on? He didn't abuse me anymore after that. Didn't he? No, I was abused by, uh, two weeks after that, I was abused by that Scottish officer. Mm -hmm. he, uh, the one who was on reception who knocked me out. Mm -hmm. He had the nickname of Mad Dog. I found out what, you, after about a, a week, you found out they all had nicknames. Mm -hmm. His name was Mad Dog. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand why he got the name Mad Dog, because he was nasty. Wow. I think he was a bit of a psychopath. Now, most of the um, staff at Madam's Elite at this point were ex-military forces. Yeah, a lot of them were, yes, I. You know, so very strict, very disciplined. Yeah. And the short, sharp shock regime, I think they brought like it as, you know, basic training in the army, yeah. like that, but a lot more brutal. Yeah, it know? was It was run like a military-style American boot camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You see what... The government backed this short, sharp shock. Yeah. And like you say, I think some officers took this as a green light to do yeah. whatever they wanted to you, lads. I took the term um, abuse of authority to yeah. a total new level. Total new level. So, what, what other abuse did you suffer in there? One night I'd gone to uh, finish work. After I'd uh, been abused by the governor, I was taken out of the engineering shop. Mm -hmm. And I was put under a garden party called Five Party. Now, this tall officer with a broken nose, this broken nose, he was in charge of Five Party. Mm -hmm. And uh, one night when I finished work, it was about a week after being on Five Party, I was in my dormitory on my own. The lad from Middlesbrough had gone down, because uh, there was only two of us left in the dorm at the time. Because mm -hmm. when, I, when I was put in the dorm, there was four beds, but there was only three in. Me, the lad from Burra, and the dark lad who got out near Christmas. Mm -hmm. This was after. This was in January. This when this incident happened. I was getting ready to uh, go down for a shower. I had my clothes on. I had a white towel wrapped around us, ready to go down, mm -hmm. and my soap in my box, ready for my shower. Mm -hmm. And I heard an officer coming into my dormitory, and it was Mad Dog. He pins us against. He slams us against the wall. In the dormitory by the throat. And he was playing with private parts. Oh my God. He only stopped when he heard somebody coming up the stairs. He let go of us and, and then took off. Wow. Like you say, the, the people don't realise what went on in there. Now, after another couple of weeks, I had an idea what was going off, uh, Debbie. I had an idea. Because mm. there was one lad talking uh, in the shower one night. This lad, was, this lad was a puff. Now, this lad worked in the kitchens. He was from Middlesbrough. Now, I've told the police this, but I don't know whether this lad's still alive or he's dead. He was a puff. His name was Milford. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that was his first name or his second name. Now, I heard him telling someone in the showers one night that he had the chef's private parts in his mouth. Do you know what? I'll touch up on that right now. That would be Neville, Neville Husband. Yeah, Neville Husband. So what I'll do, I'll tell the viewers all about this guy, right? Yeah. Because I've got a bit uh, rolled I've down. told the police about, about this guy. Yeah, this is... What I'll do, I'll explain who this Neville husband is because yeah. he is one vile, horrible man. So Neville husband, he was in charge of the kitchens at Mellonsley. Yeah. 
Uh, he worked in the prison system for 27 years, 17 of which in Medemsley. Now, what he would do is he, the new inmates would come in in the reception. He'd go down there, check them out, you know, select one. He'd go get the, the background information. He'd mainly select lads who were vulnerable, who didn't have much family, who had been in care quite a lot. And he would get them in the kitchens with them. I think there was about 17 lads at every one time working in the mm-hmm. kitchen. But what he used to do, it's absolutely... He'd, he'd take these lads out of the kitchen, upstairs in the storeroom, lock them in, horrifically sexually abuse them. You know, he'd, he'd even take lads out of Medemsley. Is that right? Yes, he did, he'd take yes. lads out of Medemsley in his car, blindfolded. Yeah. And rape them and that. But he's... Uh, when the police um, police believed he he was he raped a boy every day for fifteen years, absolutely crazy, mm-hmm. absolutely crazy. See the officers' houses, David, were in the grounds. Some officers lived in there, and some didn't. Mm-hmm. And I presume Neville husband lived in the in the grounds in one of the prison officers' houses. He was taking lads out of there on a regular basis in, in his house or whoever's house it was. Now, the officer on the gate, the gatehouse officer, had to be involved with it. I was just going to say that there. For letting them out there. Because Neville Husband, end of the day, he was only a chef. Yeah. He was in charge of the kitchens. But what I found out is he could stop other guards from searching the kitchens. Yeah. Apparently he turned the storeroom into a bedroom. Yeah. Where he kept lads overnight and done what he'd done. But my question is, how was Neville Husband allowed to go in the dorms in the middle of the night, get these young boys out of bed, blindfold them, take them in his car to a nearby, past the gatehouse, yeah. outside the fence, to a nearby house where he was raping and gang raping them? Yeah, because the governor was involved with it. Both governors were involved in it. Now, the governor who abused me left Medems in 78. Mm-hmm. And there was another governor who came in after that called Tim Newell. Mm-hmm. Now, lads' records were kept in the governor's office. That's where they would have been kept, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. So the governor must have been in on it for him to be looking through people's records. Wow. Absolutely. Did you have much dealings with Neville Husband? Did you ever see much of him wrong? I had one incident with Neville Husband. Mm-hmm. What happened was uh, I lost a week's remission. Because mm-hmm. when you went in, you had a blue tie. And after about a month, five weeks, you got a, a grade to a green tie. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't, get, I didn't get my grade. Because when I was working on a five part, he broke and those bullied us every day. This man took a disliking to me. He bullied me every day. So anyway, I lost a week's remission, and I got a week's scrubbing. So I had to scrub floors every night. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. Now one Saturday morning, it was about nine o'clock-ish, mm-hmm. and I was scrubbing the church. Now one officer took us down there. I got me a bucket of water and brushes and everything, mops, and I was mopping the floor. He locked the door after I'd been in, and after about an hour, for about half an hour, sorry, the door opened, and the Lusman came in because he was a church minister as well. Mm-hmm. Now, on a Sunday morning, Neville Lusman ran the church service. Mm-hmm. Everybody had to go to church in Medemsley. Now, he said to me, when an officer walks past you, you stand up because I was on the floor scrubbing. He says, when an officer walks past you, stand up. So I stood up, and he walked past me, and uh, you know where they're like the... The stand is with a, where they put the hymn books and you've got the uh, eagle, haven't you? Mm-hmm. The holder. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. He was messing up with some paperwork down there for about 10 minutes. So I, I was carrying on scrubbing the floor. And after maybe 10, 15 minutes, he got up to come out. So I stood up. And when he walked past, he said, I'd love, he said, I'd love to F you. Oh, God's sake. Now, I thought he meant beat me up. But when I put two and two together, I realised what was going on. Yeah. I'll but he never, he never ever got hold of me. Mm. And when, when when you went for your food on the morning, breakfast, dinner, tea, Neville Usman used to stood at the end of the servery with a white chef with a white overall on, 
just looking at lads in the queue when you were going down with your tray for your food. He was just looking at everybody. Do you know what? He tried the kitchens, the he, bedrooms, are like a sweet shop. Yeah. And like, we see how red and red and red on this absolute vile man. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do because that's just come at a good time. What we done uh, was we went and met other inmates at Medemsley and uh, we met this guy, absolutely lovely guy, spot on. He wants his identity withheld, so we are just going to call him Graham. Yeah. Graham. We went and met him. Now, we actually worked in the kitchens with Neville Husband. Uh, it took this guy a lot to talk to us. He didn't sleep that night and he he struggled for days after. So what we do now is... See, we went and met him, and I'm going to put that interview right now. Okay. Yeah. Right, uh, we're off again to meet another former Medemsley inmate. Now, this one's a little bit different than the previous ones. He was in there in 1974, March, it was roughly 49 years ago. He's never, ever told his st story publicly. This is, this is the first time ever. He suffered horrendous sexual abuse at the hands of Neville Husband, who was in charge of the kitchens at Medemsley. So, we're going along to meet him now, we're going to have a bit chat with him, see how it goes. I'm not 100% sure how this interview is going to pan out, so I will pre-warn you, there might be a bit of content in there that's not very nice, but it is part of the story, so we'll see you guys soon. Graham? Hello. Please come aboard. Oh, thank you. This is fantastic. Good to meet you, man. Doing okay? Yeah. Right, hello, guys. Uh, we're joined by Graham. He's uh, very kindly to come and have a word with us about his time in Medemsley. So, thanks for coming to see us, Graham. Thank you very much. Now, I know this is really hard for you, mate. And, uh, you know, you, you want to get this off your chest. It's unsettled a bit of dust for you, it's been a long time, um, but yeah, here we are. So, Medemsley, yeah. you were in there in March 1974, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I went in March 1974. So what was, what was the crime you were in there for, Graham? Uh, well, I, I, I was only a 16 year old, but I, I, did, uh, I did a burglary, and f for that I went, I went to jail. Mm -hmm. so, so, I robbed a shop in the middle of the night, Mm -hmm. It was more. To, I don't think it was really. Well, I, I can only say that I, I was naughty, mm -hmm. and for that, th this is not about what I did. I did something wrong, mm -hmm. and, I, and I went to prison for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were, um, like you said, the podcast we're doing about Medemsley. Yeah. And uh, you were you were sentenced there. So can you tell us roughly your, your first day? You know, getting in there, your initial thoughts of the place. Well, I, I, I was in uh, local custody for quite some time and I was taken in a, a white van. And originally I went to Durham, Durham prison and I thought they were going to leave me there. Mm -hmm. But it was quite a long journey and then when they took me over to Medemsley and they, they have what they call a reception, mm -hmm. which is uh, where the reality starts to kick in. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, <coughs> strip of all your clothes. You had to get showered and put their own clothes on. And stood in a row, naked. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, this, this is when I was first seeing Neville, husband. Neville, husband, yeah. He was walking up and down, checking everybody out. And I'm going to say that I believe they selected me there and then mm -hmm. on, on day one. I think everybody who was there will know the stories about being hit when we first went in. Mm -hmm. Because obviously you don't know the rules, so I like the way you address them. If you don't, you say it after that. Man was very simple, it was, what's your name? Graham Bat. What's your name? Graham Bennett Bat. Unfortunately, I have a middle name, so I got as far as Graham Anthony Bennett Bat. Then I was told, obviously it's something you never forget after that. It's said uh, after everything you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, being a young man being put away the first night, after this, quickly seeing the, the 
the discipline was going to be extreme. Mm -hmm. It wasn't hard to work that out. But uh, obviously the first night, probably cried myself to sleep the first night. Mm -hmm. Because I realised I was in a bit of a mm -hmm. bad place. Yeah. So, it's, uh, Neville husband, like you say, we, we spoke and uh, after research and I spoke to other inmates, you know how he, he liked to select his, his inmates to work, to work from in the kitchens. And it was based on background, uh, lads who didn't have much family or were in a lot of care. And like you say, how old were you when, they, when you went in there, Graham? I was just two months into my 17th birthday. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you just said there, it was pretty obvious to me that he'd selected me mm -hmm. on the first day. Mm -hmm. I remember him standing in front of me after he'd been walking up and down. And he sort of lingered. And I think it was the fu I, I, I'm not. It, it sometimes can be sketchy, but I'm pretty sure I was told the next day that I'd be working in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Now, for all the other inmates who would be in, be in Meadows at the time, I'm assuming that people thought the kitchen was like the cushy place to be. A good job, yeah. I found out later why this was. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and how he, he was actually controlling the kitchen staff and what was going on in the kitchen. But yeah. uh, that became a pretty quick shock. Mm. Now, Graham, like you say, I, I know this is really hard for you, and I think it's the first time you ever spoke of this publicly, really. Yeah. Um, Neville husband, like you say, he's took a shine to you, he's selected you. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to really address this, you know, the, the first, the first time when you knew something wasn't right with Neville Husband? Well, obviously, the, the, the first couple of days, he, he showed a kind of willingness to show me how to behave in the kitchen and how to, obviously how to actually work in the kitchen. And he kept constantly reminding me that I didn't want to be out there with the general population because look what's happening to them all. Mm. So he made me, I suppose, feel safe. Mm. Like I, I'd got myself a cushy job mm -hmm. and uh, obviously that's how, how we controlled us. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately it was very brief because this this is the... It's alright mate, take your time buddy. About four days into being to Medemsley he pulled me out separately and took me to a small room in the kitchen, which was upstairs. A small, we sort of, he called it his storeroom. Mm -hmm. That's it, mate. Just take your time. I understand. Well, then he, once the door was closed, he became quite aggressive. Mm -hmm. Now, in, it was a, quite a small room, but Well, basically, he got me next to a table in, in the room. There, it was, there wasn't a lot of floor space in the, in the room, but... He'd already warned me about nothing had to be said. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be spoke of. You don't oh. want to be out there, how bad it is. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he immediately pulled my trousers down. And he pushed me onto what was like a small table, so I was leaning backwards. Mm -hmm. without any trousers on and he started to he put his mouth over my willy and he started to suck, suck me off well. now I remember his hands but he were big and he, he was a very strong man and I couldn't move he held his hand on on my chest and held me back onto, onto the table and, and he continued to do this. And I started to feel like I wanted to go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And because I started struggling, he started going faster. Oh. And eventually I couldn't stop myself and I wet myself in his mouth. 
Well, and I think he got probably the wrong idea about what what I was going through. But then he, he came up because he was on his knees. And all I can say is he, he spat at me all over my face. Well, you're your own. Yeah. And then he, he continued to hold me down while he masturbated. And then came on, on me as well. And after that, it, it was very quick. So he stood up, pulled his, put himself together. Said, pull yourself together mm -hmm. and don't speak about this to anybody. And he marched me down back to the dormitory where I got a shower and changed. Mm -hmm. So I, obviously very quickly I knew. Some of the things that, that I felt was, I don't, nev never will understand why the... I had an erection, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I can never, ever mm -hmm. understand why. Mm -hmm. So I've had the guilt of this all my life. And it'll never go away. Mm -hmm. You see, Raymond, you've had the guilt, the, the way I've spoke to other lads and other inmates is, you had no control over this, Graham. You know, like you say, you were, you were small, 17, 16 I'd like old. to say that well, before my criminal activity that forced me, you know, that got me to being into prison, I wasn't naive. Mm -hmm. I lived in Middlesbrough. I lived in Cannon Street, over the border. Mm -hmm. I knew how to behave. Mm -hmm. And I was no... I wouldn't say I was a shy boy, but I can never understand why I didn't... Gouge his eyes out, bite him, mm -hmm. Any, anything. I, I just cannot live sometimes with the guilt mm -hmm. of allowing it to happen. I think it was a whole fear factor thing that's, you know. Well, uh, yeah, obviously they had utter control. I mean, fear to me is not even a strong enough word. Terror is a better word for me. Mm -hmm. I was terrorised. I, I was, it's the most horrendous chapter of my life and it happened so early on in my life that it's just about affected everything I've tried to do since. Yeah, like you say Graham we've been speaking for maybe, maybe a month or so on the phone and uh, you know you, 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 you've mentioned before you know it, it's been what nearly 49, 50 years and it, it's still you know. Well uh, it mm. still hurts me now to even mm. talk about it. The reason I wanted to talk about it was just I don't want to do it again. I'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. I've got to say it once, what happened. Mm -hmm. There was, as you can imagine, this was only early into my sentence. So the abuse continued for three months, on and off. But he was selecting other boys. So there was, if, the, if it's the right word, respite for me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was a case of just get on with the kitchen work. But he frequently used to visit on a night and take me out of the dorm. He used to come into the dorms and take you out during the night. Yeah. Wow. And where would he take you, Graham? Well, he had he had keys. He had access to all kinds of cubby holes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it would be in a cubby hole. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I'd, I was in his control for, for three months. There was absolutely nothing I could do about it. Nobody you could turn to either, No one to turn to. Nobody you could tell. So it was just... I mean, the, the inmates of Medamsley will know about the terror, will know about the control, will know that nobody ever stood up and s spoke out mm -hmm. because the consequences were so bad. Mm -hmm. And Neville Husband's idea was he thought he was doing me a favour. By keeping you out of... Because he kept me out of... That, see, one of my guilts was that all the lads in, in Medamsley will have known what was going on in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So it's it's their thoughts about me, mm -hmm. even though they weren't in my situation. Sometimes I used to think, they all know. 
they all know what's going on. And yeah. I haven't got the balls to do something about them. Mm. So Neville Husband, like you say, he, he, um, I've done research myself, and I know he, he, he didn't allow other guards to search the kitchens and things like that. He had total control yeah. of the kitchen stuff. How, how did he get so much power in that kitchen? You know, do you... I, 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 the, my only thoughts on it, that, that he'd been developing his, his little world mm -hmm. for a few years, but it was still, I would say, still in its infancy. And I'm sure there are lads out there who were in Medensley who suffered as much and worse mm -hmm. because he was developing his trade. And, one of one of my guilts is, is that even when I got out, I couldn't bring myself to report it to the police out of sheer terror, fear that they could walk me straight back in to Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And that's what I used to threaten you with as well. Never as well. I've also had to carry the fact that because I did nothing when I came out. I mean, I, I was quite shocked, to be honest, when I, I, I found out that he'd, he'd been abusing people mm -hmm. well into the 80s, was it in the 80s? In the late, late, the late days, yeah. And that was 1974. It's a long time. Could I have stopped some of that? I'd, I'd have gone to the police. I understand what you're saying, I do. <sighs> but my, my fear, I mean, Medamsley, wasn't very far from the police station after I was let out. Mm -hmm. And to hear him, he, he walked he walked me to the gate on my day of release and stood there and said, you'll never want to come back, will you? Which he, he was obviously certainly right about it. He used, he used that phrase that haunted me. Mm -hmm. I went to the police station. I sat outside the police station. I couldn't bring myself to go in and, and, and tell them. Mm -hmm. And then a, a police officer came out just going on routine mm -hmm. duty and said, hey, on your way, get going. Not knowing what you were building up inside you, bottling up. That's crazy. So when um, when you were released from Madam's Lee, obviously you moved on with life. And years and years later, all this come out with, you know, the abuse, physical and sexual abuse. Did you see all this on the news, and how did it how did it make you feel when you? When well, it's not it's not the best way to say. I, I'd, I've already had one failed marriage, and I was into my second marriage, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in quite a beautiful place actually. I was I was uh, sat on a balcony, overlooking the sea, and I just happened to turn round, and my partner was watching some news from Britain and there was a full screen picture of his face on the television wow. which, which immediately uh, I was horrified to see it absolutely mm -hmm. horrified took you back to that he took me back to everything everything started coming I mean to be honest with you after that my second marriage collapsed almost instantly wow. because I couldn't cope with that when I, when I came home, I tried to continue to keep it under, under wraps, not mm -hmm. say anything about it. Like, I thought, I felt that if he gets jailed and he's been found guilty, that would be enough. Mm -hmm. That would be enough for me to leave it behind him. Mm -hmm. But it never was, mm -hmm. because I felt that I, I belonged on the list. You know, I, I, he was getting done for someone else, not me, mm -hmm. not for what he did to me. Yeah. But uh, I'm not sure of the dates or anything, but I think he died not long after. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, I think it was 2008. He passed away with a cardiac problem. So I got, I got. It uh, causes me lots of grief, even doing this. I, I, I'm going to suffer now because I've had to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it will take me to pull myself together, but I got in touch with uh, Seabrook, mm -hmm. Durham investigation team, yeah. mm -hmm. which for them I'd like to say thank you mm -hmm. with all my heart for digging into this and getting it out onto the 
Yeah. Into the public domain. Mm -hmm. Like you say, Graham, I, I know it has taken a lot for you to come and speak to us and, you know, and bring up bad memories of your horrors in Madamsley. And we do, do really appreciate you coming forward and thank you and uh, for myself and the podcast team, we do hope you find some closure yeah. and, um, you know, maybe this is help getting off your chest. You know, I, I really do. But I really appreciate you coming. I know it took a lot of balls to come on. I'd like to say that, that there's been something else bothering me mm -hmm. for, for many, many years. And while I was in Melhamsley, there was a young lad, a young man in the bed next to me. And it's haunted me all my, li all my life since I was in Melhamsley. But he, in the middle of the night, he removed my shoelaces and everybody else's shoelaces. And he went into the shower room at the bottom of the dorm and he hung himself. Wow. And to this day, I don't know. I never seen him again. Mm. And I don't know whether he actually managed to kill himself. Mm. But that's haunted me all my life. That Madam's League, like you say, you're going in there for a short period of time, three months. And it, it, the everlasting effect, it's hard on not, not just yourself, everyone. I fail, I fail to see how a system like that could possibly make people want to go and live a normal life afterwards. Mm -hmm. Because I found it impossible. And I'm sure most of the inmates have also found it impossible. Mm -hmm. Because that is not the way to treat our... We're supposed to... I can't remember... I can't think of the word, but we're supposed to teach them how to do live properly. Mm -hmm. No, and that isn't done by this kind of brutality. No. This kind of horror. Mm. Wow. Well, listen, Graham, that's been brilliant. Thank you very much for speaking to us. I really appreciate that, my mate. Thanks. I don't, won't, hopefully, ever speak about it again. Mm. After that. Mm. Wow. Well, thank you very much, my mate. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Graham. So right, we're back. Um, I like to say I, I understand that interview was a bit hard to listen to, but this did really happen. And that bloke, what a diamond of a bloke he was. He is. Um, he really struggled with things. Never was able to commit to, to life. You know, he's he's dealt with it all his life and really struggled. But Graham, absolute fair play to you, mate. Much respect and love for talking to us. So we're back. Back now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're on about Neville Husband there. Yes, I. Mm. Do you know the story of Kevin Young? Yes, I know the call. Yes, Kevin Young. I. Kevin Young was in the same year as me, but he was in there summer, and I was in the winter. Do you Do you want to explain this? Yes, I. I, I've, I, met, I met Kevin a few times there, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Kevin uh, was sent there for receiving a stolen Timex watch, mm. a petty offence, and as soon as he arrived there, he was allocated a job in the kitchens and Kevin came from a broken home and he grew up in care mm. and uh, as soon as he was in uh, his first day in the kitchens or his second day never Lusman started rubbing himself against him and that's how the abuse started now Kevin was taken out of there on a number of occasions blindfolded Ta taken out of Madam's League yes into one of the officers houses he was blindfolded he was taken out of there one morning, or I think it was one morning uh, or dinner time, he was taken out of there into one of the officers' houses and he was blindfolded as he was going in the house. And uh, they put a plastic band round his neck. You know, the Iceland chairs you put on the cake, the oh, yeah. band. Mm -hmm. It was a big one, and then they put it round his neck. And as they put it round his neck, he's, you could see on the floor he's blindfolded, and he saw uh, five sets of feet. Oh, my God. So there was five people present in the house. And they put this thing, when they put this thing on the neck, they tightened it up. And they bent him on the stairs, he, he blacked out. And as he saw five sets of feet before he blacked out, he saw a pair of brown brogues. Now, the governor always wear brown brogues, always wore brogues. Oh. But you could hear him walking walk down the corridor, they had steel tips in the back. Segs them days, it was steel tips. And uh, they raped him on the stairs. Oh. He also, the, I'm sure I watched an interview with him with the heroes of Bedhamsley. Great uh, 
documentary that by the way yeah it is a day of year right? um, and he said he could Kevin Young said on an interview he could hear Polaroid snapping yeah he was, they were fought, filming they were filming uh, filming they were also filming Kevin with a projector oh. as well as taking photographs of they were filming with a projector as well mm. well you mentioned this Kevin Young because uh, he's really important to this madam's he story he was yes I he was one of the leading key spokesmen for the Madamsley lads. Yeah. He sort of got the ball rolling, didn't he? He did, yes. But uh, sadly, he's no longer with us. He passed away, Kevin I. Yeah. Lovely lovely guy, Kevin was, lovely guy. Wow. This is never husband. I mean, some of the, the, like, the lads I spoke to, you know, worked from in the kitchens. Some of them didn't want to come on camera, which is fair enough. But I'll tell you some facts about... Um, Neville Husband. He worked. You listen to this. This is unreal. This is unreal. He started working Medemsley Kitchens in 1971, I believe it was. Yeah. Now before that, he worked at a Borsal down south. Um, is it Saint Peter's? He worked at Portland Borsal. Portland Borsal yeah, down sorry. south. And in 1969, his his locker was searched or he was arrested, investigated. He got caught with sex toys in his locker photographs of these boys in that parcel naked um when he was questioned by police he said it was research for a book he was working on yeah and he got no further action and then was sent up north to medamsley where he was con- he could work for 17 years raping young boys now surely no matter what like i know you're in that sort of line of work nowadays you get vetted you get crb checked but I don't care what decade it is, that should have been a red flag. Yeah. In 1969, before he went to Menham's Lee. Now, who cocked up there? The uh, the prison service covered it up. They were both moved, him and the governor, James Miller Reid. They were both moved from Portland, Boston, for abusing a boy. So, the Ministry of Justice might not have known this, but the prison, the prison service at Portland and the governor at Portland was Miller Reed. Mm-hmm. So obviously it was going to get covered up. So they've moved them both from one institution to another one to carry on the abuse. That is crazy. And it's when that's when he met Leslie Johnson who worked in the stars in Bedlamsey. Now Leslie Johnson worked alongside Neville, didn't yes, he? Yes he did. I saw I saw Leslie Johnson every day. He was a teddy boy. He had a teddy boy cut. Was he raping the guys as well? Yes. Wow. He was, yes. He was See the thing is with these paedophile rings, David, they go right high, you know. Mm. They do. Every officer in there knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. Those who didn't take part in the sexual abuse, that's if there is any, are just as guilty as the ones who took part in the sexual abuse for not reporting it. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Like you say, this, this podcast, it, it goes really deep and dark and it, it, it's... It's unbelievable the story. Like, how how was he allowed to do that? You know, because he he had the power of the governor to do it. So, and that makes sense because, like you say, Neville Husband was only a chef, and he could prohibit other guards from searching the kitchen. That's right. So, how did he get that power to be able to stop them from searching? Through the governor. Now, Miller Reid left Medlands in seventy eight. Now. That's when Tim Newell come. So Tim Newell had to be a part of the paid of hiring as well. He declined to be interviewed on TV, on uh, the documentary I did a talk on, The Dark Secrets of Medemsley. He declined to be interviewed. Now when you decline to be interviewed, David, you're hiding something, aren't you? Yeah. Now there's a story of, I think it's the governor, I'm not 100% sure on this. When he was... Um, spoken to by police years and years later now this is a story I've been told I don't know how true this is apparently the police went to his house yeah. and said look we need to speak to you about your time in Mendley and the story I've been told is look lads I'm busy at the moment can you come back tomorrow and I've been told that he hung himself that day what happened was David when the police went to his house in Essex they knocked on his door now this doesn't this doesn't add up to me they said, we want to question you about physical and sexual abuse at Melbourne's Detention Centre. Mm-hmm. 
he said, I'll come up to the station tomorrow and make a statement. Mm. And he never turned up. And he went missing. Now, apparently, they found his body three months later decomposed in the wood. Now, why didn't the police arrest him there and then? Yeah. That's a bit I can't understand, Derry. For, for allegations, it's serious. If the police had arrested him there and then, he might have confessed everything what was going on in there. Mm. But I was told of one police officer that he didn't hang himself. Wow. What? Now, there's rumours going around he had dementia and he wandered off. Mm -hmm. He wandered off. And when they questioned his wife, she turned around and says he never ever talked about his time in the prison service, never ever ever talked about it. Yeah, I didn't think you would. Oh dear, yeah, man. It goes far beyond, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We'll never ever get the truth, Davy, of what actually went on in there. There's only 30% of the truth come out. Mm -hmm. The other 70% still out there. Now, I've got my thoughts about what happened to Miller Reid, the governor. And I don't think he killed himself. I don't. What do you think? Pardon? What do you think? I think this man was murdered to keep quiet. Yeah. I do. Wow. There were some big names visiting that place, you know. In there on a the night, there was a board of visitors coming in with suits on. What, a board of it is yeah. visitors were coming through the night? On the night, on the night. It's six o'clock when you had association. You'd wonder who they, who they were, what, what they're doing in here. What, you'd never seen these guys before? No. I saw them a few times, they were in there on a night. I was talking to three lads one night. They come into the association at the eight o'clock. Association finished about quarter away at the eight o'clock. They come in and they said they'd been to a play at Shotley Bridge. When Neville Usman was a member of the Amateur Dramatics, he had these lads out to the play. What, he took these lads out yeah. of the to, to perform a play? No, to watch this play. No, I think he's been, had them out there to be abused. <sighs> crazy. Absolutely crazy. There was one lad taken into uh, Shotley Bridge Community Centre and abused. In Shotley Bridge. That's three miles from Edmondsley. Like, what the fuck? Like, they're, they're taking young boys out of the tent. Yeah. Centers, like, surely... Like guards on the gatehouse when Neville husband and that was doing this, you know, like they've got to get past them guys. Yeah, they'll right. Neville, he'll have seen them. It, like never question, never challenge. Like no, because why, Neville, why have you got that lad in the back of your car blindfolded? They were in on it. There was always one officer on the gate. You had the big main gates and you had one small gate like that. Mm -hmm. Where the gate officers were always the gate there was a gate officer's house, like a room opposite the gate. So he had to be in on it. Every officer in there had a key for the gate. So Neville Usman must have been just letting himself out the gate with his, with his boy. So the gatehouse man had to be involved with it, uh, Davy. They got to have. Yeah. Now, there was one lad taken into the house. He heard a bird chirping in a cage. He was blindfolded, of course. He heard this bird chirping in a cage. It could have been a cockatiel or an African, parrot, African grey parrot or whatever it was. And he heard a woman's voice in the room as well. And this lad was blindfolded. So this woman, it could have been one of the officers' wives. Well, it had to be one of the officers' wives, hasn't it? Wow. Or if, or if not a close part of the paedophile ring. That is absolutely crazy. Terrible. Crazy. <sighs> Bloody hell. Um, I've spoke to quite a few other inmates as well, like you said, we mentioned earlier on. And... Uh, one of the interviews, I tell you what, we'll stick that in now. There's a great guy from um, Peter Lee, where a uh, lovely guy who interviewed him. They call him Vince Paul. Now, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Vince. I've met him a couple of times, yeah. yeah. Great nice, guy. Nice lad, I Great right. guy. Uh, he come to my house and we sat and had a chat. We've done a little interview and he mentions, in fact, I'm going to put that interview right in now. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm back again with another former Medemsley inmate, Vince Paul. How are you doing, brother? Thanks for coming down. You're more than welcome, my friend. More than welcome. I'm lovely to meet you. You lovely too, to man. You. you too. Now, Vince, we spoke early before I pressed record. Yeah. And uh, I do know it's hard for you. You struggle. And I'll say the same as the other boys, the other lads I've met. So I'll say, just take your time. Stop me, time, you want, buddy. Okay. So the podcast I'm doing is about Medlesley Detention Centre. And uh, 
you ended up going there. So what year would you go there, my mate? I was there 84, summer of 84. Summer of 84, so it's quite... Frankie goes to Hollywood. Yeah, Frankie <laughs> goes to Hollywood, number one then. Yeah. Uh. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm giving everyone an insight of what it was like in there, bud. You know, so you went in there 84. What was the crime you don't mind me asking? Just a little touch on the crime. <clears throat> it was me and my brother-in-law we were buying scaffold and we had in aluminium. Mm -hmm. He went to court at uh, CMI, I went people £300, £500, mm -hmm. uh, fine. Matter of principle, I'm not paying it. Yeah. I'll get the same as him and on. You'll, yeah. go, you'll go to uh, do deals. I'll do deals. Uh -huh. If I'd have known what I was going to be up against, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd have paid the fine. Yeah. So principle. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. So you, you ended up in Menemsley. Uh, yeah. What was your sentence? Don't mind me asking. Three months. Three months Three attention months. centre. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to jog your memory a little bit here, my mate. So just, like you said, take your time, do your best, buddy. You were in there, 80, 84, did you? 84, say? summer of 84, red hot. Red, red hot. hot. Can you remember getting in there, your induction in there? From Peatley Police Station, the old police station, went to Law Newton. Uh, Law Newton went to Menemsley. Um, there was me and maybe three, four, five other lads. Um, and you think, what's going on? You're looking around and mm -hmm. everything was, you know, it was all suits and ties and stand up straight and all this and the other. Yeah. And whenever you were spoken to, because I'm of an age where you were at school, everybody would say, yes, sir, no, sir, just polite. Mm -hmm. But if you forgot, have that. Mm -hmm. yeah, then you name a number. I could never remember my, my number then. I can't remember it now. <laughs> and you got a kick in every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolute nightmare. Standard attention. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Awful. Sick. When when we went in, they said, um, what's your name, George? Get your clothes off. Any illnesses? Let's check your bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, just the way they looked at you. Yeah. This is not going to be right. You know why is he looking at me like that? I've showered, I've boxed, I've played football, I've showered women mm -hmm. all, all my life. Yeah. Why is he looking at me like that when he shouldn't? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Warning signs. So as soon as you go in there, like you say, other lads I spoke with have said the same, said very similar to yourself, and like the whole regime in there, the short, sharp shock, you know. When you go in there, did you, um, you know, the, the whole atmosphere in the place, was that a shock to you, you know, like... It was, yeah, because I'd, I'd never been to anything like this. I'd, obviously, I'd, I'd been at a bad lad fight and trouble, general, this, that and the other, but I'd never come across anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it reminded me of, of, of a headmaster I had, Batman, um, in Shotnall. I went to court for punching him, principal again. <laughs> but he was the same. He was stiff upper lip, you know, with a gown and a cap, and he slapped you. Why did he have to raise the hands to you? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm. And it took me straight to that, and I thought, I don't like you. Yeah. But then you look him in the eye and think, I want to break your jaw. Mm. But then, you you know, you win the fight, but lose the war. Exactly. And it makes you no know better than them. Exactly. Why, why would you lower yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. So, this podcast we're doing, my mate, it's about the physical sexual abuse, what occurred in Menemsley. And obviously it came out years later. There's a massive investigation going into it. It's only just finished Operation Seabrook. So I'm going to ask you, mate, um, some questions. I'm sorry that we have to bring it up because it's, it's part of the story. The physical abuse at Menemsley. Now, can you tell me anything like either you suffered or witnessed yourself? Any stories? It was constant. Constant. Every minute of every hour of every day. Um, if you're walking down the corridor, officer comes... Stand against the wall, stand to the left, stand to attention, yes sir, no sir. Um, your day started. We were in the dorm upstairs, do your bed pack, mm -hmm. which is a nightmare. If it wasn't straight, if it wasn't right, didn't measure, you were battered. Mm -hmm. Come down the stairs, stand on the stairs. They handed you the razor. If you took the razor or you, you, you weren't quick enough or you were too slow, too slow, too fast, you were battered. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I ended up scared of escalators, mm -hmm. um, petrified of them. You know, them stairs are not going to move you. Step down here. Well, I don't want to step down there because I know you're going to punch me in the mouth. What, so when you're on the way down yeah, the stairs? Yeah, when you're on the way down the stairs, you, you know you're going to, good morning, what's good about this? Have that. Why? Mm. You know, and it, it just, uh, that, that every day I started like that. Yeah. yeah. And it, the day didn't end because he used to come in the night. You could hear the lads crying and thinking, it's, it's happening. It's, mm. It was just constant. Constant. So what are, the, um, what are the physical abuse? Did you suffer like things? Can you remember any stories? Yeah. Um, 
I was, um, I'd got a job as um, as a governor's orderly, red tie, mm -hmm. going off to the bus, the concert, this, that, and the other, lovely. Don't speak to people or you get slapped. Don't look at people or you get slapped. Anyway, I'd come back this day. One of the girls that had a big poo didn't flush. We got the blame. Officer, they'd come in, going to have to take you. The governor said, right, I'm going to have to take your red tie and you know what's going to happen. The minute he looked me in the face and said, you know what's going to happen, it was all, he knew. Mm -hmm. You know, he yeah. was guilty, the number one, right at the top. Yeah. I've gone out there, no way, and I just looked and I thought, and they just battered the shit out of me. Yeah. Do you fight back? No. Just curl up in a ball and take it. Yeah. And hope they get tired. Yeah. Just constant. Constant, yeah. Everyone said I, this, it was probably it's excessive constant. brutality. So, we have spoke a little bit earlier on, Vince. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. Now, some lads did find this hard. So, like you say, I'll say again, mate, you take your time, there's no pressure from us. Your worst memory of Madam's Lee Buddy? Well, like you say, we were all in the dorm, and they would come up on a night, and the lights would go on. Who's wanking? Nobody's wanking. I can hear your noises, I can hear your panting. And this night I've said, it's the young lad crying, ate your grass and battered me. Well, I'm just saying. So you learn, keep your gob shut. Mm -hmm. And he was crying because he knew what was happening. And then I... I thought, what's going on? I'm new to this. And then, you come with me, you come with me. Where's he gone? Then when he come back, where have you been? And he's sobbing, he's shaking, he's beside himself. Where had he been, like, Vince? They took me away there. Mm. You take your time, boy. Do you know what the hardest thing is? <clears throat> At the time, I didn't know, but when he come back, and then the lads just said, oh, they take them away. Um, and, yeah, they, they, they assault them, they abuse them. Well, we all get abused while the kids, you know, sexually. And I'm thinking, oh, for the love of God, this kid, he's not as big as my six-year-old grandson. I could stop this piece of shit. I can stop this, but what happens to you then? You know, I'd heard tales about people who committed suicide, and the question I'd asked, had they committed suicide or had they been killed? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, when you found in your bed the next morning, mm -hmm. so you say nothing doesn't matter what you say, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And my worst memory is watching that young lad go on to know what he was going through. So you've seen him getting taken out of his bed and, well, you know, must be hard for you, buddy. The, the thing was, I was bigger than the screw who was taking him. And you could see them stood at the door and I thought, you know, if we got together, we could knock you. Mm -hmm. But how do we get out the fence? How do we get out the gate? What comes, there's more of them than us. They can do what they want, we can't. They're going to be believed. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take for the lads to be believed? A long time. A long time, mate. Frightening. Yeah. So that was your worst memory. Like you say, all the lads I spoke with there said the same, Vince. They had utter control. <laughs> they they brutalised, they terrorised the lads so they didn't speak up or speak of some of the horrors of what were going on in there. So, but yeah, you, like you say, you know what was going on. We, It's it's come, come to light now what was happening. They battered the silence into you. When my daughter rang us, I moved to Derby in 2012, and she rang us and said, Dad, it's all over the news. My mum said, you were there. Why did you never mention it? It's in a box there. I don't want to talk about it. Do you never mention Madam Slee at all? Never. Never, never got mentioned. My wife, my second wife went, what was that? I said, I don't want to talk about it. She went, well, what was she about Madam Slee? She Googled it. Nosy cow. So then from there, it's there. Mm. And all of a sudden... You're unsettled, you can't sleep because you're thinking of it. Mm -hmm. you, you, mm -hmm. you think of that little lad. And then you think, here I am now, I'm here at so I'm this, that and the other, I could knock them, I could do this. If I could get my hands on them now. But no, it makes you no better than them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. You fight fire with fire, no, because it makes you no better than them. Mm -hmm. Do a shit, scum, just yeah. bullies. Just well, from my eyes, I said it up uh, there with Pete Tullers, cowards. Cowards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, picking on kids, really. Literally. So there's uh, another. Like we say, there was a handful of guards. I think several of them got convicted. Um, they all should have been convicted right up the government. Every one of them should have been convicted. Each other. Yeah. Literally. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to ask you, Vince, is a question. Okay, is uh, some of the guards? Obviously, you got a few of them. Does any of them stand out to you, and why? <sighs> I know it's got to be the PE officer. Onslow, funny opposition, stripped naked. 
kick you in the bollocks, hit you with his hockey stick. He was just, just a horrible, horrible man. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Everyone says that, you know what, everybody. You, you stood in the queue, you were walked past, money opposition, and down you went. You're not quick enough, and you were battered. And you knew if you went down, you were getting the kicking as you walked past you. Yeah. If you weren't quick enough, you were, you, 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 you were battered. If you were too quick, you were battered. So you, you, know? you couldn't, there's no you, way you, out could, of it. You, you couldn't win. You knew he was coming through. What you doing down there? You battered, get back up. And then you got back up, then you had to get back down. You, you, you couldn't win. You just couldn't please him. Couldn't, oh. couldn't. And then you had the others, like your, your, your Germans, you broke the noses and them. You know, the, the chemical, when I lost the job as the, the red um, the red side, the, the governor's orderly, with the gardens, and then I was coming doing some cleaning, and you're doing the floor with the chemical. Mm -hmm. They walked past you, jumped up and stood against the wall. Um, what are you standing there for? I've got to stand here for you. Yeah, right, or get on your knees, you missed a bit. And they were purposely with their heel. Mm -hmm. As soon as you went down, they were stamping on your hand, you know. Wow. People say to me, Oh, is that two years of boxing? No, not there. Bastards in Medford, they stamping on my hand. That's not from boxing. Stamping on your hand. You know That's what I mean? Crazy. Animals. Awesome. You go to the doctor, my hand smashed. Hand. Mm -hmm. There's done there. Uh, like you say, with the other lads I spoke with, there was no one really to turn to. There wasn't. There mm -hmm. wasn't. Mm -hmm. My sister come on a visit. How is everything? Oh, she fetched me clothes in. What you want you that for? You've got your own uniform here. Mm -hmm. She's sillier, and I was battered for not telling her that she couldn't fetch them in. Well, mm -hmm. you know, you, you wrote letters and things by the time the post and this, that, and the other. You know, she was just a big sister. Oh, I'll take his favourite shirt or his favourite shoes. Well, mm -hmm. he couldn't have it. So I got battered because they had to search her bag and then give her it. Took their time. Not my fault. Mm -hmm. Not my sister's fault. She was just looking after her little brother. Yeah. You know? Just off brutal. I tell you mm. what keeps getting mentioned as well on all of these uh, like the lads I've met, top blokes by the way, um running the fence. You know, if you were ever at the back, you you got your your ass handed you to be honest off mainly Onslow. I say like I said, I would always box play football so I, I was fit, relatively fit. Mm -hmm. I was fit. So I thought you yeah, can do that. But then the lad just said to me, Don't be out there you'll get a battle for being clever, you know, we've got to catch up with you, try and stay together and we'll just do it together. So it was a group, yeah. And when I went in, when I'd done my induction, there was a, a, a kid whose name alludes me, um, businessman Ferrari 3 away table, it was mentioned in one of the, um, on, on the site, on the Medimity site. He was flat-footed. Well, you know, he, he couldn't have walked it in a day, never mind ran it in the time they speculated. Mm -hmm. So we used to help him. And uh, what you're doing out and get away from there, you know, you, you're under the time, you're battered, start again, bunny opposition, strip naked, oh, why, why, doesn't matter where you are, they wanted your clothes off. Yeah, see this has been mentioned and mentioned. Why, Vince. why? Yeah, there's obviously, they were getting off on this somewhere, don't yeah. mind, mate. Yeah. Well, you, you realise that after the time, but you don't at the time, you just think, why? Mm. You know, it's, yeah. yeah, I think you try to, just block it out. Yeah, right, or just do as you're told. Red or something. PE, you've got your pants on, you're getting the kicking. You shouldn't have your pants on. <sighs> Press up position, nose to nose with your partner. Sweep your hand away. Well, you're going to hurt. And I'm saying to me, pal, look, you swipe mine, I'll swipe. We'll go together and we'll just get out. You mm -hmm. know, we've lost. Yeah. Ah, you, you give in too quick, have a kicking. You know? No. <laughs> it was just constant. Yeah. Football team, I played for the football team. And then... You were too hard in the tackle. You weren't hard enough in the tackle. Mm -hmm. You know, who do you think you are? Just anything and everything. Yeah. It was just sick. Absolutely brutal. Like what? you say, that the tip they took the term abuse of authority to the fucking next level. Oh, and, and then some. Yeah. And then, do you know, there, there's a lot of stories. Uh, I spoke with a couple of guys, um, you know, lads trying to get out of the system, you know. Breaking the own legs and breaking the own the arms, jumping off steps on each other, you know, just to get out of PE with Onslow. Did you? Did, there was a kid in in the dorm, put his arm between two bits of thing. Again, it was it was shown on the film. You know, I watched Escape the Victory the other day. Oh yeah. And it came on where they brought the goalkeeper's arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I turned it off and, and went for a walk round the estate because mm -hmm. I can see the kid in the dorm from Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. We got the hospital and get away. Absolutely crazy. So. Uh, the 
I can say this, well, we've well, already answered this one for us to be honest, but I'll, I'll sort of ask it again. Um, obviously, it come to light, the sexual abuse. You know, I've asked quite a few of the lads about it, and the ones who weren't in the kitchen said they didn't really hear much of it until it all came out. Did you ever? Well, obviously, you did. I'd never heard nothing, saw nothing, until that night in the dorm, when the young lad was taken. Why have they took him? What's going on, you know? I'm new to all this, I'm a little bit green, if you like. No, they're never going to do that, are they? And they fucking did. Animals. Animals. I was fortunate. I was just physically abused, you know? Yeah. I was always, always being a big lad. Ah, you think you're big. Come here, you're being poor. You Come here, you long job. And, the, the, you know, I'm going to knock you down to size. Why? You know, why? Mm -hmm. But then, these these were, this kid was tiny. I've got a six, seven-year-old grandson, bigger than him. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of remained four or five, so on ring and wet. And I'm watching them drag him while he's striving and kicking. Oh, and what can you do? Just turn up and turn your back and think. Yeah. We obviously, like you say, we spoke a bit earlier on. It's cowardly because they picked on the vulnerable, the weaker lads. Exactly. You, were, you say you spoke yourself because you're, you're a big lad, Vince. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, and he's left you alone for that reason. So I'm on to the, end of the last question here, Vince. Hey. Uh, you served your time in Medemsley, you witnessed horrors, you went through the mill yourself, physically abused. Now, your time in Medemsley detention, did it have a, a long-lasting effect on your rest of your life? I'm 58 in June, mm -hmm. and I've only just... My daughter's fell a fight, MMA, this, that and the other, and she'd rang me and said, Dad, we, we have a Sheffield, it's just one step up from Derby on the train, are you coming? I went, yeah. We going for dinner, so it's on the top floor. Do you want the lift? I said, no, I'm all right. Escalator, escalator, escalator. Daddy just got on the escalator. I'm fixed. All my life, 40 years nearly, I was frightened to go on an escalator. Frightened of the dark, frightened of balloons. Just because of that. And I couldn't tell her the hypnosis and the therapy. So you went under hypnosis, didn't you? I, I had to go see when... Two, two years ago, I was dragged in, carry on with a wife and a boyfriend, this, that, and the other, and I've still got the tag on my ankle. Two years, who gets a fucking two-year tag? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so while I was there, and because Medium's Lee had been mentioned, I'm in the cell, they opened the door, and they brought it all back. Mm -hmm. And it all went raw. Then they've said, right, go see the doctor, a lovely woman. You know, I started to talk to her, and she had me in to do counselling and hypnotherapy, Watch the birdie, watch the watch this, mm -hmm. that, and the other thing, you know. Yeah, it actually happens, mm -hmm. you know. And then before you know it, I found out why I was frightened of the dark. I found mm -hmm. out why I was frightened of the vesculators. I live on an estate, big, big, big estate in the middle of nowhere on the garden, in between two villages, pitch black. The minute I moved there, light, light, light. I've got PR lights, PIR lights everywhere. You can't walk 20 yards without the light coming on. So what, what was the reason you're fighting to the, the, the dark? What, you don't mind me asking, Vince? You went to bed, it was lights out. And he's opposite me and that. You know what's happening. No, oh, that, that young guy. The young and they, they, they would come in the dark. Mm. That's a pretty take your time, man. And it, it just stared on me and it, obviously subconsciously, I don't know why I don't know. Yeah. They, they used to say to me, we used to work down in the Rigby's down in Billingham, mm. in Brian, and that was them, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Sterlo and all them. And they'll come and they say, what's wrong with you? You're a big daft bat the size of you, fighting in the dark. And they used to say, send them out there and turn the lights off, and I would just freeze. Mm -hmm. They thought it was funny because they didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, years and years later, when it all came out, I said, you know that. And they went, Vince, we didn't know we were so sorry. That's why, yeah. And that's why, because of was he telling you knew yeah. coming in the dark. Like you say, when all this came out, you know, how did it make you feel when these, see these Sick. guards were getting sentenced to prison and things? <laughs> the, the thing that got me when me, me daughter had sent me, um, it, it was a headline of a paper. They all lied. They've all got together and lied. These were lads from all over the country. Exactly. You know, all over the country. There's no way they could have fabricated the story. Absolutely not. Absolutely mm. not. And it was... <clears throat> it, it, it made me sick to the stomach, physically, because 
I know what they had done. Mm -hmm. I went to what they'd done. Mm -hmm. I seen, I heard, and they were getting, what, a couple of years. What was the worst one? Uh, the, the sicko from the gym. Did he get eight years or something? Eight, eight years. Uh, they never got ten years of the kitchens, and the others got two years, nine months. Ten years for sexual abuse? Over maybe 300 plus lads. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Wrong on every level. I think since we've done this podcast, you say with research we've done, we've been working on this for quite some time, and it goes deep, you know, like we spoke earlier on, my question is, how were these allowed to do this for so long? They went all the way at the, all the, way at the government. All the way at the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, was, I was talking with a chap, and the name was mentioned, Leon Britton, Civil Smith. Mm -hmm. And they were there, I saw them. Saw them. Mm -hmm. And you, you knew what was happening. We spoke about, oh, they'll come. They'll have him, they'll have him. He likes him. Sure enough. Gone. When mm -hmm. the lights go out. Absolutely awful. Awful. And then you see them on the telly. Oh, we're doing this, we're doing that. And you think, you mm, Yeah, we're happy with this establishment. All that bullshit. Eh? Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Well, listen, on every level. Well, listen, Vince. I know how hard it's been for you to come on there as we spoke a bit previously and uh, all I can say from the bottom of my heart mate is thank you for coming on to share your story with us mate uh, we're going to add all these stories to the podcast you know give every, give Joe Public a good look at different people's points of view like you say there were different lads from different parts of the country in different times mm. there's no way they could have fabricated the story no. so I really think it's important that we show Joe Public what happened and that's why I'm here yeah. You know, and when I mean, we spoke about it, as you know, I'm Derby and I've come up to you and I thought, I'm going to go do it. I've got to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to, I've got to put it to bed. Yeah. I've got to put it to bed. Mm -hmm. I really do, mate. From myself and behalf of the podcast team, mate, we really do thank you for coming on. And I know it's been hard for you, pal. And I'm hoping you can put this to bed and get some closure from it. One day. I hope so, buddy. Well, cheers, Vince. Thank you for coming. A pleasure to meet you, buddy. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, cheers, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. So you just seen Vince Paul's uh, interview there. Um, I just want to say well done, Vince. Was, I know how hard it was for you. He really, really struggles. And um, I hope you get some closure on this, buddy. So we've talked a little bit about the sexual abuse. Yeah. Uh, let's mention some of the other guards because they're, yeah. they're all fucking superstars as well, aren't yes, they? Yes, I was... Uh... <laughs> We'll talk about Broken Nose. Mm -hmm. He was a nasty man. Mm -hmm. Now, my abuse started off him on the five party. He asked me to lift this big tray of soil. I couldn't lift it because I was only six stone. And he got hold of me and he threw me against the wooden shed door. And he had all the guard fork and he put it against my throat. He had this guard fork in my throat. And I couldn't move. I thought he was going to kill us. I actually did. And another incident of broken nose. When you got PE on the afternoon, you put your work gear in your locker. Your work boots, your gaiters, your overalls, and you got changed into your PE gear and you, you went down to the gym. Mm -hmm. Now, when we came back out of the gym, I was getting ready. I was last because I was only a weak lad at the time. I was only four foot six and six stone. Mm -hmm. He said, hurry up, will you? So I was getting my work gear back on. And there was work boot on there and he got all the work boot and he threw it threw this work boot at me and hit me on the back of the head wait well, split my head wide open didn't it and when he realized what he'd done he took us to the recession washed the back of my head and he says oh i think that needs stitching so he took us down to the hospital wing and met him saying there's an mo there and he says i can't stitch that he says all i can do is take stitches out so i was taken to shotley bridge hospital by him and the pa chief christopher onslow Ah, his name popped up quite a bit. Oh, I haven't finished that. Well, yeah, yeah, go, you go, go, mate. No, I had seven stitches in the back of my head. Wow. And I was told not to tell anybody. He said, if anybody asks you why you've done that, tell me you fell over in the gym. <sighs> oh. They had utter control yeah. through fear and terror with and you an lads. Another incident with broken nose. Uh, in the recreation room on the... I tell you exactly what it was. It was Wednesday night, about seven o'clock. You got counted, morning, dinner time, tea time, and night. I think there might have been about one hundred twenty inmates in there. So when he was counting everybody up in the recreation room, he had all of a pin board counting everybody up. He never saw me in the queue. I was second in the 
Cleo, we've been lit, he didn't see us. So, he got his knuckles like that. Have you heard of the hen peck? Is that on top of the head? Yeah, it's a military punishment. Mm -hmm. Now, he was a tall fellow, he was six foot, turned. He got his knuckles like that, and he leaned over this lad, and he hit me on there, full force, like that. Right on the head. Oh. I just blacked, I blacked out. Wow. I blacked out, I had a lump on there, on my head the size of an egg. They were just vicious, brutal. Oh, the pain was horrendous. Now, you just mentioned a the guy there because this guy pops up on everything everybody else spoke to. Christopher Onslow. Yes. Nicknamed the machine, and yeah. he was in charge of the personal, the, the training he in the was, gym. He was, yes, he was the main man, yes, I. But everybody has said something about this guy. He was the uh, nearest thing I've seen to a psychopath. His favourite words were pain builds muscle, pain builds muscle, pain builds muscle, he used to say. Now, he had to run around the fence every day. Mm -hmm. It was four and a half mile altogether, four laps of the fence. Mm -hmm. You had to do it in 25 minutes. Now, if you didn't do it in 25 minutes, say there was 10 years running it. If one lad didn't do it in 25 minutes, you, you all had to do it again. Wow. Even on, on the afternoon or the next day. Well, let's say a couple of guys I've spoken to, they, they mentioned the fence and they say yeah. if some of the chubbier lads, the unfit lads were at the back, mm -hmm. you know, struggling... And if you were at the back, he'd be batting you with sticks, kicking yeah, you, your stamina. Yes, yeah, like, get up there, you fat bastard, and all this. Yeah. I tell you, there's a story. I tell you, one of these convictions, well, you will know. He was convicted. Um, he broke a lad's back. He did, yes. A lad from uh, Stockton. The, the big set kid. He, he was, yes, he was. He right. was on a. I, I know the lad. I've never met this lad, but I know his name. He was on a salt course. Salt net on the, in the exercise yard, yes. Yeah. I, he got yeah. stuck on the net, didn't he? Big cargo net, dead, yeah. 20 foot high. And this uh, Onslow and another scad were chucking bricks at him. Yeah, they were, yeah. He, he, he fell down, broke the three vertebrae in his back, ended up in a body cast. That is crazy. He was taken to Shotley Bridge Hospital. Now, when this lad was taken to Shotley Bridge Hospital with the uh, broken vertebrains. The medical officer, uh, the, the doctor at Shotley Bridge Hospital had given his medical records to Christopher Onslow to give to the MO officer in Medemsley. Mm -hmm. And he never gave them, he just, he took them home. And wow. put them in a drawer and just forgot about them. When the police searched his house, 10 years ago, they found them in a drawer. Wow. And that put the icing on the cake to convict him for the violence. Yeah. He could have also got convicted, I think. Um, he hit, Did he hit a lad in the face with a, a football boot or a, a muddy boot or something? Yes. Like that? Smashed his nose and then uh -huh. done, hit him again and turned yeah. this guy. So, yeah. He was, honestly, all the guys I spoke who mentioned in the said he was vicious, sadistic bastard. Like. Yeah. He beat me. He beat me in the gym and he did exactly, this, he did ex exactly the same thing to another lad from Middlesbrough, what he did to me. When you went in, you did a gym test, you know. Now, there was a, a wooden beam across the gym like that, and you did pull-ups. Mm -hmm. Well, I was the first one to get on to do pull-ups, and we be, me being very weak and six stone, I couldn't do one. Mm -hmm. So I just let go, and everybody was laughing. On Onslow ran over to me. I had a blue vest on, black shorts, and a pair of black pimsels. He ran over to me, Onslow. He got us by the neck. My vest, he twisted my vest like that. And he dragged us halfway down the gym and he was just dragging us. He was beating us in the ribs. Wow. Absolutely. A psychopath. Yeah, everyone everyone has said that, like say in fact, that's a good good part to put in it. We've got some more clips of more inmates lit. Should we stick them in? Yeah. We'll stick them in now because they some of them do talk about Unslow. So we'll put them in now. And once again, thanks guys for sending your videos. I really appreciate it. Guys, uh, we're joined by a good friend of mine, Gary Jackson from Sunderland. How are you doing, pal? I'm all right, mate. Right, nice mate. to see you again. Well, my nurse, yeah. Hello. We've done a bit of bed together in the past, <laughs> haven't we? Hi. Well, right. <laughs> we're here to talk about Medemsley, mate. Right. You, you have some experience. Acts of brutality. Did you suffer any physical abuse, mate? Oh, I loads, loads. Uh, why do you want us to start, eh? Start any way you want, pal. Yeah, well, when you go in, they tell you to run down the corridor, right? Run back, and then he had it wrote on the on the table, tiny. 
and he says, what does that say? And you had to put your head close. Yeah, to look at uh, it. And it said no run. And then he, obviously your head went off the table. You smash your head off the table. Run. Uh, and, uh, and, a, and a couple of punches. That was just your introduction. That was your introduction into, uh, into the system. Then you had a bath with two inches of water. If it was more than two inches, you got a crack. And is that it? When I looked, I went, I aid off the wall, on the floor, kicked, stamped on. Just How good old were you? Proper good hiding. Just 17. Just 10, Probably 17. Probably one of the youngest in there. Right. Where's memory in there, pal? There was a screw called Screw Blue. Uh, I can't remember the proper names. Yeah. But I, I think I was just talking when I shouldn't have been. And they made a stand retention and punched us in the head. If you if you lift your hands, I'll punch you more. So basically, I just start to stand with attention and tell it. And for some reason, that just sticks in my mind. You just feel helpless. That was always, he, he was brutal, like everything you'd done. If you said you couldn't do something, he would just bat it till you did it. Like we used to run the fence, I think it was every Monday. Yeah. And then once a month, there was a governor's run and you'd done it. And if you were at the back, he used to just be kicking you and punching you and telling you to... Everyone's to told me that, you know, everyone uh, I want to speak to I was never at the exactly. back, but I was near the back. Near like the back, yeah, yeah, yeah. you tried to keep forward so uh, you didn't get it. Did you any balls getting abused? I would try. A lad from Hartlepool, they called him Skinner. And Skinner? He, aye. Right. I can't remember his first name, but he was slow. He just okay. couldn't, like, comprehend the regime. Everything he'd done was wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. The screw would say to him, who sent you here? And he would say, oh, another screw. So he would get a good item for calling them screws. Right. Uh, they gave him boots that were too big for him. He couldn't march in them, so he used to get knocked for not marching yeah, properly. Yeah. Just generally, he just couldn't get it. You know, he just, uh, he was slow, basically. Yeah. And that, I, that always stuck in my mind. Nearly every other day, he got done for something like... Right. This is me at the last question. I, I know it doesn't apply to you, pal. And, you know, the reports of sexual abuse. Uh, I know you didn't. You I've didn't never heard of it or yeah. seen it un until it came on until the news. Until it all came obviously. on the news. Yeah, it came on the news years and years later. Until they were convicted. Aye, basically, aye. Yeah. But obviously it went on because they've been found guilty of it. Paddy Carey, the last call was Paddy and that. Uh, I was in Medley from. January the 4th, 1971, to March the 4th, yeah. to a month in there. And describe the place, Paddy, in so many words. <laughs> was that a fact? <laughs> it was, it was like, I mean, as soon, uh, uh, as, soon as you get in there, mate, uh, you just, you got a line up. And mm -hmm. one of the, I don't know what, who he was, he came over, he just looked at me and he said, that, well, you were smiling at And he told me that he said, run down the corridor. And see what it says. It said no running. So that was my first a bat on the back of the head. Mm. That was my first going in there. Mm -hmm. it was a shock. Shock's not the word. Like you I mean. So it, on that night, the very next night, I was in my bed. Like, the fuck's going on here? Mm -hmm. Like next thing you know, the door went in. All the beds were all up in the air. Like shit everywhere. Cook kicking you. Like you know what I mean. That was me. That was me first. The brutality in there, do you think, was excessive, mate? Would you say it was excessive? Well, I, oh, well, I, yeah, yeah def, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the first day you go in there, like, I mean, I get it with a, a baseball bat. I mean, I mean, he set us up anyway. I mean, I didn't realise I was smiling. Like, I was smiling anyway, but, like... What, you got hit with a baseball bat off of? Yeah, straight away. Well, it said, he said, run down there and see, see what it says. It said, no run. So he came up and it was with her. That was oh, the first yeah. night. You've either witnessed it or seen any brutality in any other way in Madamsley. I'm not mentioning his name, but the gym teacher in there. Mm -hmm. You, I found out very quickly. You had to get faster every every, every day you were in there, so I was a slow the first few days. Mm -hmm. And he used to shout your your time out, uh, uh, and you had to remember it. So at the end, when everybody finished, he'd shout your name out. What time did you get? Mm -hmm. And this certain gentleman. He had a way of dealing with people who would forget, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, the time. And you will do, because you talk, you're only young lads. Mm -hmm. And this, the Stark lad, he, he, he turned on and said, no, right, he, wherever his name was, what was your time? And he got, and he said, uh, well, I've got, uh, and he couldn't remember. So this gym teacher said, come here. And he made him stand up with his hands behind his back, put his head just above the table, then he went. Like that, with his nose on that. Did he? Yeah.
cause him pain. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you had no chance with the arms behind your back, like you were mm. it was just And I just looked. Wow. And he used to, he used to lift you off the, off the floor by your tit ends. He called it the smarty crutch, like that, just lift you off the floor. We were only young lad, we were only thin, I was only 10 stone 7. Mm. You mean, I'll lift you off the floor by your ears, he called it a Toby jug. Mm. Yeah, so. You witnessed some as well there, uh, in the same Well, that lad. Yeah, do you, want, do you want to talk about that or? Only that well, lad? it seems like a dream, because like, I mean, it seemed so long ago, but like, I suppose I kept everything inside. Mm. Yeah. But, sure. he, he you should, you should shout your uh, give you a, your number and you get a raise of it, like at seven o'clock on where you can fast and put together. So it was a really uh, sharp as you can get. Mm -hmm. And I, I was getting shaved and he just slid his wrists next to us. Mm. What was that too? Just oh, the whole, you know, the whole experience. The first week you're on clean the toilets out. So and, and, and one of the screws came past, you had to stand with tension and shit like that, like you know. But like to see a, a young lad like that do that to himself. And that, that was only like, Maybe three or four days into it, like you know, and he was. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. To this day, I don't know what happened to him. I've got to ask this, Paddy, because obviously the podcast we're doing is about the abuse at Madam's Lee, and you know, but uh, obviously there's been 1,500 inmates who come <laughs> forward and complained and reported incidents. I was just going to ask you, mate, there's, there's, uh, there's apparently a lot of sexual abuse going on there. Did you hear of that or witness anything like that? When I was in there in January 1971, I never said it was just brutality. It was just maybe they'd got up from there and I was lucky enough to get away before I would like that happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was more brutality. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, when he first went in there, they put you on a table by itself and I was on this table forwards there. And the other lads shouted at you and this, that, the other and that, like just a bit of like that. Mm -hmm. And one of the lads had knits. So they grabbed all of them, one of the screws, and started cutting his hair in front of the paper, like chunks out. So he had short hair and long hair. Mm -hmm. So everybody knew he had this, but you mean, I wonder, I do that in front of everybody. Just humiliate them. Oh, ah, it was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. And that same gym teacher, which had come out, I, I was the gym player, that's so right, the key. And on the morning, shouts fall out, and you've got to go down the stairs fast and, and wait there. And he shouted for I thought he shouted for us, so I went down. And my mate went down with us. And I seen this gym teacher come towards us. I said, quick, get in the cupboard, because it's not far out, so you'd have got in trouble. You'd have got it, being down there. You're not supposed to be down there. So I went in the, in the cupboard where they keep all the gym stuff. He only came in. He said, oh, I had the keys. He said, what, you doing? going to break me off? I said, no, I wasn't. I thought the shouted for He said, right, get out. You've got three seconds. My mate ran, I didn't. Uh, and he threw a metal bucket at us, split me head open, and I just kept on walking. Mm -hmm. And then you had, you had to get changed and go outside <coughs> uh, in a uh, like army gear. Mm -hmm. right? Nothing, I mean, the blood was just running down my face. He just walked past me, couldn't give a shit. Mm. You know what I mean? That was, that was the power he had over, over you. So one of the officers came round and I, on the night time, he had a stick called Percy. <laughs> I watched them from the other side of the drive, we go around and say, shake hands with Percy and that. And they start laughing, so he got a bat. So I thought, when he, got, when he came to me, I just went, hello, Percy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're away, you're yeah. not giving me a bat. <laughs> that, yeah. 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 But yeah, there, there were some of them there were proper evil. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? It's, that poor lad, like, I mean, with his wrists and, and the other one with his hair, the knits. Mm -hmm. There was no need for that. Did that lad who slipped his wrists survive? I had no idea. Oh it was just gone. It was just gone. I mean, you turn about seven o'clock razor blades, then things, you know what I mean, when you screw inside the, not like the old doubles what we have now. Yeah. They'd just take it in half. And I just saw the glint like that. It was just bloody. I couldn't work out what was going on. Yeah. They're just pushing us all out the way. Hello. My name's Kevin Bicknell. And I was in Medinsley from November 1978 to January 79 I was sent there by Barrow in Furness Magistrates Court for three months for stealing the pedal cycle if memory serves me well 
I was 18 or 19, but had a mental age of about 12 to 13 years of age. I know now was to, uh, Christopher Onslow. Looking up and down, I says, and he said, uh, right, I want to need some kit. Who got shows? Me. So I said, go and get, I can't remember what it was anyway, go and get this, that. So I walked off, and I could hear this, like, screaming sound, shouting, but I didn't realise who he was shouting at. It was me. They come chasing after me, dragged me with a scruff of the neck, punching, kicking, thing into this uh, storeroom where they kept the PE kit. This is what what you want. Get that, get that, get this and the thing. Still kicking and screaming, dragging me, everything, and punching. Of course, I was terrified. I, I understood it was going to be tough. Like this was only day two. Work wise, I was working outside. Not outside the jail, in but just outside. <clears throat> Shoveling muck and crap and etc. Anyway, December came snowed really badly. So then we had this shoveling snow in the shorts and plimsolls. No uh, we had overalls but <clears throat> they chose to have us working in the shorts and plimsolls. <clears throat> Freezing cold, shivering, terrified. Worst memory was hearing inmates crying themselves to sleep at night, me included. <clears throat> As I say, I was. 18 or 19, but I had a mental age of about 12 to 13 years. Worst screw was Christopher Onslow, without a shadow of a doubt, having received... One of my other memories is, if you wanted to go to the toilet at night, you had to shout, ah, fall out, sir. Well, this one night, I had to go. <clears throat> Opened the door. Shouted, fall out, sir. I thought I heard uh, prison officer say, yeah, go on then. Anyway, I went for a week. Come back. The dorm cl door closed behind me. Next thing, it flung open. <clears throat> And I, I don't know who it was. I just felt this whack across the back of my head, and said, "You know what? You know the uh, rule. You have to shout fall out, sir." Then I uh, decide whether to let you go or not. Anyway, I was released in around January. Stop in the gate, give you a travel warrant, and make your, you have to make your own way. To where uh, I think it was Newcastle train station, and I got home, but my life was never the same. I suffer with uh, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, and I have to take medication. That's my story. Right, hello guys, uh, we're back again with another former, uh, my name's Liam, mate, uh, Peter Toole, came down from Newcastle, thank you very much, how are you doing buddy? I'm doing fine, you good self? Yeah, good, thank you, good, I'm thank good, you. Good. Now before I get in this, Peter, I appreciate you coming down, mm -hmm. I know it's hard, unsettling dust from all memories, mm -hmm. but uh, you went to Mensley, uh, what, when did you go to Mensley? 1985. 1985, so what was what was the crime, you don't mind me asking? Handling stolen goods. Was it? What was your sentence for? I got four month, de four month detention centre, mm -hmm. and then I got knocked out with a three month detention centre. So yeah, your first time you got sent to Madam's Lee, um, arriving there, you know, what was that like, your initiation into the system? Can you remember that? I'll never forget it. Oh. I remember getting off the coach, through the gate, going to the gatehouse, and there's two screws standing. 
and against the wall you had this great big blast plaque, like plaque on the wall. And he went, which one use our tool? I went, oh me sir. The next time I know my head was banged off it. Straight away. Straight away. Because I had upset one of us as in the courts, upset when I was sentenced, that we, had, we had words. So they made a beeline for you straight away. Because I, I was, I pled not guilty, and I was expecting to get not guilty, but, and I got found guilty. But the argument I had was before the verdict, mm -hmm. and um, basically I got me, I got, I got braids as I went in. Wow, crazy! Now, see, Madam's Lee, this podcast we're doing, it's about the physical and sexual abuse mm -hmm. that occurred there of members of staff there. So, let's start with um, the abuse at Madam's Lee. Would you say it was excessive there straight away? Brutal is a word. Mm -hmm. Really bad. Every day thing. Well, every hour thing. Every minute thing. Yeah. There's always someone getting hit. So can you describe it? Any of the physical abuse you were, you received? I received my head getting braided off off the plaque. Um, the first time I'd done pee, I collapsed. And I was on the floor. And I remember getting pulled off the floor, getting kicked and punched. I vomited, and the next time I know, I was on the floor, my head, face was getting rubbed in the vomit. Oh. Um, then I was told to wipe it up with my vest, and I had to wear that vest for a week. No way. Uh -huh. yeah. um, my 21st birthday, um, my head was braided off a brick wall off Onslow um, for refusing a bunny hop. When I didn't refuse the bunny hop, I was bunny hopping. But I just had an operation on my groin and my leg was locking and I stood up and he just went, be one ballistic, basically. Mm. See, this, we spoke we spoke earlier on, Peter, mm. and uh, this one's law guy keeps keeps popping up on every single well, interview he will. I do. I think, I, I think he hit everybody in there. PE, you are hit with sticks, medicine balls. Um, he just done for the fun of it, basically. Mm. Once again, Pete, I, I do understand this is hard for you lads, and I've said it to all of them. I can only imagine how hard it is bringing up these old memories for you guys. So you, we spoke earlier on before that we press record, and uh, your friend Kevin Young, you know, sadly not with us anymore. Now you were close with Kevin Young, really good friends. We got, I got him about four or five years ago, and we kept in touch. And if I needed any advice on, I used to ring him. And he's ringing me on things, but like he told, he sat me down one day and he told me everything what happened to him in there. And he was he worked under never husband in the kitchens. He, he did, yes. Mm. So I know it's hard, mate. I know he sadly passed away. Uh, can you explain the sort of abuse Kevin well, was suffering? Basically, Kevin got raped, regular. Then he was gang raped. He was taken out of the detention centre. Um, and this went on and on and on. And when he got out reported, he went to Durham Police Station and he was actually told to fuck off or he'll end up back in Merrimsley. But Ke Kevin being Kevin, he fought it. Mm -hmm. He studied law and he fought it and he got Neville Husbands to court. Mm -hmm. And Neville Husbands got 10, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, if it wasn't for Kevin, this investigation wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So everybody... He's got to thank Kevin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did watch him on uh, he he was Madam's League mm -hmm. YouTube and uh, you got to take your hats off to the block. It must have been hard from coming forward and you know like as for all he is, you know, I can, like you say, I can only imagine how hard it was for you in there. So I, I have to continue with this abuse, mate. I'm mm -hmm. really sorry. You know, anything else that you're witnessing there from you know fellow inmates or anything? I like? witness a lot of inmates getting beat up, hit with sticks. Mm -hmm. um, dragged out of bed, standing in corridors in the middle of the night with nothing on for talking. Um, it just go, it, it wasn't like abuse; it was torture. Mm -hmm. the, these prison officers were wrongly charged; it should have been torture. Yeah, like the standing in the corridor in the middle of the night with nothing on—that's torture. Yeah, you can say they just destroyed the will of you, young lads, didn't they? Well, the the, the job to do the, their job, the duty in there is to break it. And once they've once they've done that, they'll just walk all over you. What was in my mind? What's happened? What I witnessed? What happened to me? I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. I can remember like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And this is what the police couldn't understand when they interviewed us. How can you remember something that happened all them years ago? So fresh in your head. I had to go, I had to go and get counselling. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I didn't ask for the counselling. They suggested that I had to have it, the police. Mm. So I done it. I got it. I still feel the same. Mm. I just like, I know like when you go in them places, you've got to be punished, but not tortured. Kid, kids getting beat up all the time for the, for the slightest little thing. When they say shout you, when you had letters, people writing your letters and she shout your name out. If you didn't jump up quick enough, you were hit. Mm-hmm. You know, if you didn't eat your meals up quick enough, you were hit. Mm-hmm. If you didn't tidy up, you were hit. It was like their language. Yeah. And also, a uh, couple of the guys, did you find that there was nobody to turn to when you were in there? Nobody whatsoever. You had to take on the chin. Mm. And the last thing you want to do is tell your family when they come and see you, you don't want your family to worry. So you've got to lie to them and say everything's okay mm-hmm. when it's not. So they did then members of staff, the guards, you know, they had total control over well, everything. It's like walking out of this world into their world. Mm-hmm. Once you're through them gates, that is it. Mm-hmm. You know, to the day you get out, you're in their world, their rules. You do what they want. You've got to take it. Mm. So I bet, like you say, when you arrived there, it was a total shock to the system. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. See, a lot of guys I've been talking to, you know, the first night they were in there, they said, I curled up in bed, Dave, and thought, what the fuck, where am I? You know, he said it was frightening. He said, really frightening. Do you find it the same way, you know? Well, I'll be quite honest, my first thing there was putting a dome by myself. Um, a lot of shouting going on, a lot of screaming. But when I, when I started getting night, I only got up and got washed. In the, in the screwing what you're doing, so I'm getting washed there. Get back in that fucking bed now, you get up on me, tell you. Mm. Um, I, I didn't realise you had to stay in your dome till you were till you were like shouting in the morning. Yeah. And that was a shock because you've got a run up this corridor and right at the top and there's a screw stand with a black bin. You've got to run round the bin and go back down. Everyone's got to be counted. And if, you, if you're if you still in bed or the last one, you get slapped all over. Yeah. You know? See, so, Pete, we, we were speaking earlier on before we uh, press record and... Uh, there was a, a bit of a story you told us where uh, Christopher Ronslow was a notorious instructor in the gym. Everyone was frightened, terrified of him. And uh, you sort of stood up to him at one point, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, my man? Well, basically, while, while Buddy hopping around the parade square, it was my 21st birthday, only been there a few days. Buddy hopping and my leg locked. Get fucking back down. So I called him, my leg's locked. And he, he just... Raggles all over the parade square. Got us by the hair, braid me head off the wall, and I grabbed his hand like that. For me to get off. You grabbed his hand? I got his hand. Yeah. Worst thing I've ever done. Mm. He just went ballistic. We all had to go down the um, big field, interval, do an interval train. There's a field of banks like that, right at the back of the detention centre. And uh, it's a very, very steep bank. And you imagine doing interval training in a red hot summer. Mm. It was tough. What were the lads like towards you after after that? Oh, I'm on too late. Oh, I'm on. <laughs> Keep your mouth <moves> shut, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But it, it wasn't fair. But see, in there, if you've done something wrong, everyone suffered, not just you. Mm-hmm. This is why people are afraid to see anything. Because yeah. everyone suffered. Yeah. So when you were in there, you, you weren't assigned to uh, the kitchen? Definitely not. Yeah. But did you hear or know of that stuff, what was going on in the kitchen with her husband? No, nobody did. Don't get us wrong, you, you, had, you heard, like, sometimes you heard screams in the middle of the night, but you thought, my, I thought it was just, like, kids messing about and that, and, mm. but it wasn't. It was later on. When it all came out. When it all came out, I thought, oh, I've had a lucky escape. Mm. Right, so this... Uh, the gym instructor, the guard at Medemsley, notorious reputation he had, Christopher Onslow. Yeah. Describe him as a bloke. As a bloke. Medium height, walked with a limp, never smiled, very brutal. Loved inflicting pain on people. Always had something in his hand. And would he use that? And he would use, if you were like, 
in the in the gym and he yeah you had to run around in a circle he'd be running away with a stick and if he'd, he'd whack you across the someone will get hit with that stick mm-hmm. if he had a medicine ball someone's going to get hit with that ball mm-hmm. it doesn't, doesn't matter what like you, when you do your PE or somebody always got hit or kicked or whatever mm-hmm. every time well apparently he broke ankles and things like oh that. yeah yeah now when I was in Medimsley, I was the, I went there on the Friday on the Saturday morning I was put in the hospital wing. So What were you putting there for? I had an SDI when I went in. Alright. Yeah. Right, so they put us in the hospital wing and um on the Sunday the screw says, Look at you wanna stand outside, get some fresh air and watch So I was watching these lads do do the football, playing hockey, and I always remember Chris Owens. And I'm not going to mention the lad's name because he's never made an allegation, but he, I knew him because he lived next to me in Newcastle. He, he was only in for fines. And Onslow had the hockey stick, and this lad tackled him, and he braided him right across the ankle with a hockey stick, just because he tackled him. Wow. He sounds like a right horrible man. Horrible's too good. Mm. Horrible. To, and, and another thing, you know, when he was on trial, his wife was never there. Mm. His daughter was, but he's, I, never, I never ever seen his wife there once. Oh, mm. no, I. I wonder if she knew. Well, however. Yeah. What puzzled me being in there, like when you're on the parade square and that, and people are getting hit and dragged about, people used to be walking around the fence with the dogs on the other side. And it was just, they didn't bat an eyelid. They must have been used to seeing that sort of treatment. They did. They didn't bat an eyelid, you know. Um, I could, couldn't get couldn't get over that. Yeah. But Onslow, he was just a horrible little man, mm-hmm. um, and everybody's seen a deal with him. Yeah, just a little bully. Yeah. Well, oh, this um, the other guy, um, broken nose, Blake, Blake. Right, I, I've heard a lot about him, but he wasn't there when I was there. He had left. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my friends, a little bit older than me, he had a couple of run-ins with him. Um, but I'll let you speak to him about that. Yeah, he's the one who's coming on. Yeah, I can't, I can't speak for that, but he, he'll tell you all about broken nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're all bullies, that's the only word for for them. They, they couldn't go like you know, a pub in Newcastle and start picking on people. Yeah. Because they get braid. Mm-hmm. So they're yeah. being crowned up as as, well, I would torture you. Yeah, so d- different people behind the fence. Uh. Well, this is it. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, Doing it is wrong, I had a job to do, but the job went to the head. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt, Peter. The, the job went to the head, it's as simple as that, but like doing that to young kids. And some some kids that were in there shouldn't have been in there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it was quite sad. Some had a bad start in life, mm-hmm. and then they went there to get tortured. And... Mm. Well, let's say we, we spoke about um, Neville Husband. And like I say, I know you really didn't have much to do with Neville mm-hmm. Husband, yours is mainly the other side, outside the kitchen. And how he would select inmates to go and work in the kitchen with him. He would check the backgrounds, you know, see if they'd, they'd been in care a lot, if they had much family. He would target them guys who didn't have much family, nobody to turn to, to complain about. No, me, me last week in Merrimsley, what, had to paint the, the well, them corridors I was telling you about before. And I always remember, it was rich cream. These concrete walls had to be glossed. And done all the paint, painting, and it's it finished at the kitchens. And I always remember, Neville Husband's coming to me, you've been a good job there, good job, blah, blah, blah. How long are you in for? When do you get out? Have you got a mum and dad? Are you married? Have you got kids? Do you get this? And I just thought he was making conversation, but what the policeman said to me when I was getting interviewed after I got out, he was fishing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with you having that problem that you had in the hospital. Yes, room. I think I was left alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was left alone because of that. That's what I think. So that STI was probably one of the best, best things ever. <laughs> Believe best whatever. thing ever happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear about um, lads self-harming, you know, trying to get out of Merrim's Lake? Oh, the kids jumping on each other's arms and that, and to skip PE. Mm. So they had to do it for Onslow. Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, definitely yes. So just so describe Onslow for us, you know, like 
in the gym, obviously, he's ex forces. I'm sure he was ex forces. Yes. So a strict discipline fella. I he, think was it was it the Royal Marines? He said in the court he was. Mm-hmm. So I might be wrong. I'm sure he said because I sat through a couple of the trials. Um, he was his nickname was the Machine. And when I was there, he had a limp because he had not long had a hip operation. But before he had the hip operation, he could run the fence backwards. He was fit. Mm-hmm. It was called the machine. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just a horrible man. Yeah. So he was speaking to another guy. Um, he mentions running the fence on a Monday and then he had the governor's run once a month, I think it was. And he said that Onslow would be whoever was at the back. You know, you get the unfitter lads at the back. Punch and kick all over? Yeah. yeah. If you were that. See, I wasn't very good on PE. It was one thing I could do, I could run. Mm-hmm. So that never affected me, the fence. I just love doing the fence, to be honest with you. Yeah. Did you see the lads at the back struggling getting uh-huh. it? And they, people just come in while smoke. I was <gasps> Are you with us? Because you know how smoke in there? In the... mm-hmm. Yeah. There's fat lads, um, smokers, just unfit kids at the back getting hit and hitting... And then if you didn't do it in that certain time, everyone had to do it again. Yeah. And it just went on, on, on. How did you feel when you seen all that? Did you see it on the news years later? Well, what happened was years later, I think it might have been about the year 2000, I was at my mum's and she, she always used to read the paper, the even Chronicle, and she she's come here in a minute, Peter. It goes down the path. And she opened the paper, she says, uh, do you recognise him? I went, yeah, it's Neville Husbands. She says, read what he's done. I was shocked. Mm. And she went, I want to ask you. I want the truth. Did this happen to you? I went, no, definitely not. And my mum my never mentioned it again. And then the next time, I think, got eight or ten years you got. Yeah, ten years, yeah. yeah. You know? Absolutely crazy, but considering the, the same... But what he done? They say it was maybe 300 plus victims, even though he got charged with two... I don't believe, I, I think you in the thousands with him for yeah. the length of time he was there. Mm, 17 years, yeah. But he talk, I, I, you're not talking about, three, I th- I'd say you were talking in the, in the thousands. They've got to see that to cover themselves up. Mm. But I say he, he really, I, I, in my opinion, you're talking thousands, not hundreds, thousands. Mm. Did you ever see Neville Husband creeping around in the dorms on a night, you know, getting lads out? Or Never ever seen him in the dorms. Only time I seen him was the church or the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um. And he always had a smile on his face in the kitchen. When I won't know why now. Yeah, yeah. Like a, like a sweet shop for him, to be honest, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, so, you know, after everything come out, uh, you went to court yourself, didn't you, Peter? I went to court, not for Neville Husbands, I went to court for the last lot that were up, mm-hmm. Operation Seabrook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to, like, look the songs on the face. And did you? Oh, I did, yeah. No, it, um not North Allerton, Newton Aircliffe Magistrates Court. When he was in the courts, I actually stood at the door for him coming out. So, like, face to face. And how did that make you feel? Great. Did it? Great. Because he was just shit on my shoe. Mm-hmm. He was nothing. The way he treated you, just a, just, a, just a horrible little old man he was. Mm-hmm. Like a dirty, scruffy old man. Yeah. You know? And I, 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 like, I, like, I just smirked at him. And you think the power that he... He had all views, you guys oh, in yes. that place. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I bet that was a nice feeling. It was the best feeling in the world, looking him in the face and smirking at him. Mm. So do you think... This is a funny one, this. Do you think justice was served, you know, when they got sentenced? Or do you... No, definitely not. No. Definitely not. No. They didn't get long enough. Mm-hmm. Um, there was... I can't, I've got to watch what I say here for legal reasons, but they were, they were charged with things they were found not guilty of, and I believe they were guilty. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people didn't get justice from them. Mm-hmm. Um, what you got to remember is you've got kids from all over the country come forward, and they've all told the exact same story. It's not as if these people could get together and make it up. Different parts of the country... Different times they were in, they weren't in together. Exactly, mate. Like you they, they weren't in together, and the judge, the judge was good, mm. but what he said was, "You weren't old Ben when you did this." Mm. 
But what what went good for them was their age. They couldn't get like big sentences. Yeah. Like when Onzu got the eight and a half, I thought, what's his other two going to get? Mm. And it was eighteen months and things. No, like no. That. There was like I think McGee got two year ten months, and Broken has got two and a half. I might be. They got two years, two year plus on the last two. Um, and they, for what McGee done to people. Mm -hmm. See, they were found not guilty on the sex charges. Um, McGee wasn't in when I was in, but him and his son were wearing all the public gallery up all the time. Um, he had no idea what was going on, and nothing was said. We, the the the, vic, the victims were looked down on, and they got all the taken to court in mini buses and out through the side door and put up in hotels and. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Uh, if you were sitting in a public gallery, one that one that uh, screws his son was like trying to wind you up. They wanted a reaction, mm. and I should tell the lads, don't give them one, because it'll look good for their them up in the in the dock. Yeah. But we won. Yeah, we won. We won. You yeah. know. I know, like you say, these memories still haunt some of the lads. Like you mm. say, I've met quite a few, and it's 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 horrific. I would, you know, they've never, I mean, some of them 49 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, and still to this day, they can't move on in life, can't commit to anything. Like, when, when Onslow's on trail and I never once seen his wife with him, mm. his daughter was there all the time, which I did feel a bit sorry for her because she was lied to, she was brainwashed, mm -hmm. she thought her dad was innocent. Mm -hmm. It's her dad. Yeah. And when he got found, when he got remanded in custody, when he's found guilty, she was crying. I did feel a bit sorry for her. Mm -hmm. But she was she was lied to. Yeah. If he says he's innocent, why not get a lie detector test? Mm. Yeah. If I was getting accused for all that, what they were accused for was his own minute. I know it's an admissible in this country, but I still would have got one and I would have paid from you in pocket. Yeah. Just to clear your name. Just to clear my name. They yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So I, what I'll do, Pete, as well, I'll, I'll touch up again. You say, I'm sorry to bring up your pal, Kevin Young. You know, I see... He was everybody's friend in the, in the group. Mm -hmm. he done a lot for the group. Um, I only knew a few, yeah, but what a lovely lad. Mm -hmm. um, nice lad. If it wasn't for him, there'd be no investigation. Yeah. He fought it for years, and he says to me, I'm tired. Is I've done this for how many years was it? Twenty odd year. Mm. But he, he got his justice. Yeah. It's like you say when he first tried to report, he was told. He wasn't listening to him. He was yeah. told the exact words was fuck off or you let him back in Melbourne's lead. That's crazy. Like you say, they put you in a situation where there is no one to turn to. So really, a, a policeman seeing that to you, it makes you think did, did the police know what was going on? Mm. Yeah. So did they turn a blind eye? This is what you got. This is the million dollar question. Did Durham police turn a blind eye on Melindley? Mm. Yeah. I know there was one story I think I read um where a, a young mate was raped by mm. another husband and he went up to Christopher Onslow and tried to complain. Yes, I know it's I know the same story you want to tell us. And he uh, ended up getting a fucking Be Good kicking. Chris Owens would beat him up, didn't he? Beat him up and sort of said, "Don't ever speak of this again." Uh huh. I be, I was there. I was I was at the court, and that was. See, Chris Owens, he brought kids back, on the. So, what's yeah, that thing? Assault course. There's, there's a assault. There used to be a assault course there, and the kid got stuck. And. Chris Owens was supposed to threw bricks at him, and he fell, mm. broke his back. So they've took him to hospital and they give Chris Onslow the report to put in the prison hospital. But Chris Onslow took it to his house and when he was raided off the police, they found it. It had been in his house for 30, 30 odd year, 40 that years. crazy. So what? Mm. That, is that true his guilt? I hear, I did hear that story, yeah. Uh -huh. I say he was a, a big set kid and got stuck on the net. Uh -huh. but that's right, aye. And, uh, we are throwing bricks at him. Ended up in a body cast for a long time as well, I think. Um, so, so, and then the DFA took that file 
he probably would walk free from them courts. Mm. Yeah, but that was one of the convictions he mm -hmm. was charged with, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. But you say the brutal regime, you know, it's it's absolutely crazy. So really, these officers weren't that bright, were they? No, no. In my eyes, cowards, mate. Our cowards is too good to call them, mm. you know? Um, but I do believe for them to do what they've done, it's happened to them. Yeah. Maybe it's one of the forces, or they've wist witnessed it, or mm. for, for them to carry on. Mm. I think as well what they've done is because a lot of them are ex-forces. Yes. Uh, they've brought, tried to bring that basic training regime mm -hmm. in Medemsley, but then added on a whole lot of more brutality. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. They could get away with it. Well, they did. For a long time. See... One of the questions was put to me by Durham Police was, was there any officers in Mirimsey that didn't give you a bad time or hit you? I went, yes, there was a couple. And he says, right. He says, did they ever witness anybody getting hit? I went, yes. He says, right, them are as bad as them for not reporting it. Right, yeah. So, at the end of the day, seven prison officers in the dock, the whole of them should be in the dock. Mm. Each and every one of them. Yeah, all as bad as each other. Uh -huh. mm. Absolutely crazy. Crazy. Like you say, some of the guards would keep popping up. I'm allowed to say it was a, mm -hmm. you know, is a broken nose, to call him. Um, Christopher Honslow, mm -hmm. Neville Husband. But um, it's absolutely brutal. It is. And I couldn't, like you say, I, I keep saying this, and I've said it to the other guys, I can only imagine how hard it was in there for you lot. So... Peter, I really do appreciate you coming on and speaking. Not a problem. I do, I thank you very much. Not a problem. I'll yeah. help in any way, get in touch. Yeah, I will do. But listen, Peter, thank you very much for having a chat with me. I really appreciate that. Not a problem. I thank you very much, bud. You take care, my man. You take care too. Cheers, pal. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Short and sweet. No sugar coat with me, Sean. I've got a little bit Dutch. You know, it's called by. I don't know shit like this. My name's David Fletcher. I'm from Artie Pound. I was in Medinsley in 1984. Just went away. Gets in there. Perception. I got six or seven screws. Whatever. Big bath. Big, I, I call them clean. This was bath. Big old steel bath thing. That much fucking water. Stripped you down. Got you in the bath. They put uh, some sort of powder or something in there. They'd probably get a freeze off it. Whatever it was. I don't know. Something, something in there. Next thing, pair of underpants on, you go to you go to the place where you get your kit. Ask me what uh, size waist it was, what, I didn't have a clue what size shoe I was, to be honest. So you get what you're given, yeah? Next thing, up, up this passageway, outside this office, I think about eight was there, all sitting on the chairs, yeah? Doors open, I think I was about the third person in. Doors opened, you in. Anyway, as the boys were coming out of the office and like, going into the room, they look a bit ruffled, it's if they went, they, they went, they had no eye contact as they walked past us. So, anyway, my turn, you in. I goes in there and told me to stand up straight. I thought, fucking hell, I stood up straight. Ask for my name. I said, David Fletcher. That could took me off my feet, the way you wouldn't believe. Yeah, he took me off my feet. Feet in position. I thought it was getting more. As I'm getting up, next time you speak to an officer, you say, sir, another one, on the wrong machine. On the machine, what are you doing now? Eh? Yeah, oh mouse, yeah, two walking sticks, not one boy, two walking sticks, and you're walking like that, aren't you? Yeah, you cunt. We've looked, white tag, didn't it? By the way, a big strong cunt, you want, there's something wrong with his hip, but he's still pouting with things. It's come towards the store cupboard, he stood in that doorway, there wasn't one of us, not one lad in there, we were trying to crawl on the back, so didn't he? There wasn't one of us who were never going to punch in a fucking head. He got you, he got you, he got you, he got you. Punch he was. And then one used to do that on the floor, get you by the back of the fucking air, he had to throw it on your toe, and he could lift a man up like a cunt, he'd all about cunt he was. It was broken, lads. Everywhere, you had, any time a screw walked past you, you would look like you, 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 you were a Queen's Guard, you were a Queen's Guard, the floor was glass. 
the fellow was that, the, 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 we spoke, and that, the, that doctor in there, he hasn't gone to the when you first go in, you, you go to see the doctor, he, he looked at you too long, you talked to him, you, you, you put him in with it. But let me tell you something else, you know the governor from our house, when all this come out, you know, he, he went to him and only his fucking self. You know that fucking, that, uh, never lose been, the, 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 the kitchen was in there, yeah, fucker, he had keys to, he used to go in that place, uh, why should he have keys? He was, he, he was a civvy. He should have had keys to the inside the village. He used to open the door, get the boys out of the beds. He actually used to take them out the fucking jail in his can. Fucking, fucking gangbang with you, cunt, yeah. He was a nasty cunt, he was. Anyway, lads, I am grateful for a couple of things up there in a strange way. I've kept my fitness up to this fucking day. Half my boys for fun. My time in Medamsey. Well, where do I start? I was sentenced to three months in Medamsey Detention Centre in 1977. Three months in them days was eight weeks, four days. Well, this was going to be the longest eight weeks, four days of my life. I was sentenced at Kenton Bar, Crown Court, Newcastle. And in them days, you used to get transported from the courts by coach to wherever you were sent and handcuffed to another prisoner. Well, I was handcuffed to this man. He must have been in his 60s. And he said to me, where are you going, mate? I said, I've just got three months detention centre, Medamsey. And he said to me, you poor bastard. I'd rather do my 10 years in, Medimsey, in Durham than your three months in Medamsey. I was in there years ago. This got me thinking. Anyway, after about an hour, we arrived at Medamsey Detention Centre. Big fence around it, about 20 foot high. And I was sitting through this small gate over the road into reception. In reception, the governor was sat there with at least three prison officers. And one of the prison officers said to me, have you got a girlfriend on the out? I said, yes, the outside. Was the meaning for the out. Anyway, that is, it punched me right in the face and then in the stomach. And he said to me, in this establishment, you address all officers when you answer with sir. So I said to him, yes, sir. So he said, I'll ask you again, have you got a girlfriend in the out? So I replied, yes, sir. And he said, well, who's fucking here now? Great start. Anyway, I was took over the yard and allocated a dorm. And then I would... And in our dorm, there's two young lads from Harrogate, I think. Anyway, every, every night they used to come back from work, later than us, and just sit on the beds, on the bunk beds, crying. And obviously me and the other lads thought, what's going on here? So anyway, we asked them what was going on. Obviously, there'd been sworn silence and... They just said, nothing, we are okay. And years later, I found out, well, everyone found out, the lads in the kitchens in them days were getting raped, buggered, sexually abused by certain officers, screws, Neville Husband and Johnson being the main ones. So sick, really feel for them lads. Anyway, one day, we were doing PE, and the PE instructor, Onslow, Christopher Onslow, who got eight years, said to us, today we are running the fence twice. Once for the Queen, and once for me. Anyhow, I ran the fence the first time, got round it, no problem. Second time struggling up the hill, I fell flat on my face. 
and all I could hear was Onslow behind me. Get up, you butter bastard. Butter bastard because I was from Middlesbrough. Anyway, I tried to get up but slipped again. At that, he grabbed me by, by my neck and arched my back and dragged me up the hill. I said to him, all you are is a purebred bastard. He said, we'll see who's a bastard when we get back to the gym. Anyway, like I said, I was getting changed in the changing rooms and he comes on slow. Straight over me, punched me in the face and then in the stomach. And then I got the biggest siding of my life. Kicked, punched, head butted, and even kneading the balls. All because I couldn't run the fence. The place was brutal. Other memories of Medlesbury, I remember getting dragged out of bed in the middle of the night with the other lads in the dorm. Taken down the corridor, stripped naked and making do bunny hops up and down the corridors, naked. It's obviously that the screw in charge of us on the nights, on the night shift, was getting off on this. So sick. I still have nightmares about Madame Z now. And I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. The worst screws, in my opinion, in my time, was Onslow, Big Fat Cyril, Little Sir, Broken Nose, Kung Fu, German, and I can't remember the rest. Total nightmare. One that I will never, ever forget. Thanks, lads and lasses, for listening. So... There you go, guys. You've seen some uh, clips from other former Melamsley inmates and a massive shout-out, lads, because I've met them, I've seen what it's done to them and I know how hard it was for them to speak. So thank you, lads. A massive shout-out to you guys. So we'll start off where we left my mate, uh, yeah. Onslow. Right. No. I saw him uh, kick lads senseless in the gym. He did the same to another lad from Millersbury as he'd done to me. This lad gone to the parallel bars to do where... Uh, pull up and he couldn't do one so he dropped down and the lad started laughing because everybody was laughing at him mm-hmm. but this time he got all of him by the neck he got him like that and he dragged him down as he was dragging him down he was punching him in the head full force punching him in the head Crazy. and what he used to do in the gym when he got to the gym session he'd get you to lie on the floor and he'd get someone to throw a medicine ball on your stomach and wind you on purpose yeah yeah there's another story, um, you might know more of this than me, um, Chris of Ronslow, now a young inmate apparently was working in the kitchens. Yeah, he was, yes. And uh, he was raped and sexually abused, often had his husband. The story I've been told is he'd went to, was it the warden or Onslow? What happened was, this lad was in his dormitory crying he'd been raped off never husband. Mm. So he went down to the governor's office to report it and the governor told him to get out and ten minutes later the lads laid on his bed in the dormitory and Nunzlo come up and dragged him off the bed and kicked him senseless oh my god burst all of his face open and kicked him senseless so say other guys I spoke to there was nobody to talk to nobody no, to tell you couldn't do anything about it Debbie you just had to take it you just had to take it it must have been horrific in there. It was terrible. He used to get two lads together in the gym, right? He would tell you again the pressure position, right? And he would get another lad there in the pressure position. And he would say to one lad, I want you to bruise his wrist. So one lad would slap your wrist. He had to. So you, when he slapped your arm, your arm would come out and you'd fall on the floor. Mm-hmm. And you could fall on your face and smash your face in. He used to do with that. That regime in there, like you say, the short, sharp shock. You know, like, if it's done properly, I sort of, yeah. You know, the lads have broke the law. You know, he in there, a bit of physical, hard training, a bit of discipline, yeah. But this brutality is just unacceptable. They had a licence to do what they wanted, Derby. He, he, he was a psychopath. The man was a psychopath. Mm-hmm. His favourite words were, pain builds muscle, pain builds muscle. That's his favourite word were. 
absolutely crazy. There's another uh, there's another guard there that popped up a few times. Um, Pigeon Man, the nickname was who? Pigeon Man, John McGee. Yes, that's John McGee. Yeah. He was there when I was there, but he's he hadn't didn't have a, he had the pigeon shed at the bottom of the ground in the early eighties. Mm-hmm. He was there when I was there. Mm-hmm. His name was big nickname of Big John. He was a nasty man and all. I think he was a next. Uh, I've heard he was an ex-marine. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Now he tipped a a salt cellar of salt down a lad's throat. Mm-hmm. He poured salt down a lad's. I throat. like the, you know the salt cellar and the, mm. there was dining tables with four chairs and four people sit on each table. And there was a salt cellar on the, everyone's table. He tipped a full. Little salt cellar of salt down the lad's throat. Oh God, absolutely crazy. See these, they're just brutal. Yeah. They're just doing what they want to do. There was another incident there. Was there's an officer in there called Big Cyril. Right. He was a nasty man and all. I still remember him. He was a big fella, about five foot ten, nearly six foot. He'd have been here down store and all of that. He had curly hair. Mm-hmm. This man and he came from Blythe because he was. He supported Blythe Spartans Football Club. Oh, yeah. What happened was, one Saturday afternoon in the... Uh, one Saturday night when you were getting your tea, it was winter time, I think it was middle of January, somebody had made a noise in the dining room. Mm-hmm. And he asked... He stood up on a chair in the dining room and asked who had made this noise. Nobody would come forward and say they'd made the noise. So everybody was bunny up and right around the whole building. Right round the corridors, into the TV room, into the recreation room. That's well, hard. That's hard to do. That bunny hopping as you well. You push your heart, you know that. Yeah. On your like that bunny hopping. Now, this went on for twenty minutes, and I couldn't go no longer. I just flaked out with exhaustion. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Sir, it was me what made the noise." He just confessed to it, even yeah, though. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't me. <coughs> so, in the recreation room. At the bottom of the river, there was a little TV room about the size of this, maybe it's a bit wider. So he took me in there, and everybody's wondering what's going to happen to me when I was in this room with this big Cyril. I had a blue striped shirt on, denim jeans, and a pair of black shoes. He took us in this TV room and locked the door. Now, <coughs> he got all of us with the neck, and he ripped my shirt off my back, and he was pounding us in the ribs. Well, he knocked the wind out, I couldn't breathe. I was laid out on the floor. I was maybe in there, maybe 10, 15 minutes at least. And when I came back out, everybody was... Recovered and... Yeah. Everybody was thinking, God, what's he, what's he done to him? Because it was just sheer terror. Oh, terrible. Absolutely crazy. He was, he was a nasty man as well, he was a psychopath. Yeah. So... What we'll talk about now, I mean, we've covered quite a bit of the physical yeah. sexual abuse and that, you know. I've got input off other former members of the inmates as well. Um, so we'll talk about in 2013, uh, Durham Police launched an investigation. Yeah. They called it Operation Seabrook. Now, this started with one man coming forward, really, didn't it? One, yeah. One man reported it and it opened a can of worms. Yeah. Over 2,000 former Madam's Lee inmates came forward, reported extreme acts of physical, sexual abuse and rape. Now, like you say, let's talk about that. You know, you, you were you were involved in that as well, weren't you? Yeah, it, 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 it came out before that, you know. Yeah. It came out uh, 18, 19 years ago, the, a, lot of, a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's when uh, Kevin Young went to the police station when he got out and reported it mm-hmm. to the police, and they said, "If you don't get out of here, you'll be going back to Evan Bedamsley." Fucking hell! So he must have just played on his mind for a few years. Mm-hmm. Now, when he was down York, Kevin he bumped into Neville's husband. What he bumped into Neville's yeah. husband in York? What? Near York Minster. What? Just in the street, you know, like yeah, bumped into him. Wow! And he saw Kevin Young, and he must have recognised him, and he this is Neville's husband, balled it off. So, Kevin reported this to the police again. Nothing happened. And then he saw Neville Usman in the paper and Leslie Johnson. They both lived in Shotley Bridge. They were abusing a nine-year-old boy. Oh. 
they were raving this nine-year-old boy, never husband and Leslie Johnson in Shotley Bridge. So when Kevin went back to the police, there was another 14 lads come forward with Kevin to tell them what was going on, what had been going on in Medlemsley. These were the guys who were raping me in Medlemsley. And that's when the police arrested Neville Husband and Leslie Johnson. Yeah, because I'll touch up a go. Neville Husband, um, like you say, was caught in Medlemsley with, yeah. with some uh, explicit photos in his locker. Mm -hmm. He was shipped off to Franklin Prison. He worked yeah. there for a little while. And then he was the minister of a church yeah. in Gateshead, I think yeah. it was. Now, when Operation Seabrook was launched, police raided Neville Husband's home, seized his computer, um, they found thousands and thousands of indecent images of young boys, um, all sorts going on in there. So he's just, he's just done this for decades and decades. Yeah, getting away with the J.I.I. Decades. Now, when he got prosecuted for abusing this nine-year-old boy, Johnson and his husband... Was this in the church time when this happened? Or? I think it might have been I. Uh, I think they were prosecuted about 18, 19 years ago mm -hmm. for raping this nine-year-old boy. And he, he pleaded guilty to raping 12 boys in Medemsley. He got uh, 12 years in prison. He got nine years for abusing the nine-year-old boy in Shotley Bridge and he only got three years for abusing raping 12 lads in Medemsley. That is unbelievable. And that's when... Uh, more people came forward, you know. There was a, there was a lad from Scotland. Uh, he, I think he's probably the worst case. Mm. Now he's a good friend of mine. This, but I kind of mention his name because okay, yeah, he's still got a case going on. Mm -hmm. Now, his mum was raped every day for nine, for nine weeks. His mum. Every day. Where in with? In Medlands, this Scottish lad. He was he was raped. He he came forward uh, just after Kevin Young and them. Oh, the his, the, the his the MP lad. got the ball rolling for him. This man was uh, raped every day for nine weeks. Of never was man. Yeah. He was just an absolute. Fucking he even stopped him uh, send, writing letters to his mum. Wow. Did you? Um did you, did you know when you were at the court with Operation Seabrook, you uh -huh. went to court? I went to a few cases. You went to a few cases. Did I you took go, days off work to go to some of them, I. Did, did you go to Neville Husband's trial? No, no. I didn't go to Neville Husband's trial, no. Mm. So you were on uh, other guys? Aye. I went to the other five officers. Wow. See, it, it's not easy to go and tell the police what's happened to you. Mm. It, yeah, no. I can imagine. I told the police when I got out of there. I told the CID what happened to me in there and they just started laughing. That was in May 78. Wow. It started 11. Well, say, um, like you say, Kevin Young, he went and reported to the police. Yeah. Uh, Peter Toll told me, and he said, yeah. and he was told to fuck off. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd be back in Medemsley. You know, I, carried, I carried this in my head all this day in mind until uh, 13 and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, when I read about Kevin Young, I was too scared to go to the police and tell the police what had happened to me in there. It was a good one what abused me, not never husband. So yours is right at the top. It was right at the top, say, Davy. I. Well, well, like you say, you don't know who them guys were coming in through the night in the black suits. It was supposed to be board of visitors. Why would a board of visitors come in? Because they were part of the paedophile ring. Exactly. There's no he had reason. to be, Davy. There's no reason for them to. They had to be. I mean, what does people want visiting places like that for? Through the, of the, in the middle of the night. They were as part well. of the paedophile ring. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly, mate. So, like you say, um, Durham Police did launch this operation. Operation Seabrook, yes. Operation Seabrook, and brought everything to light. And it became one of the largest investigations of its kind in the UK. It lasted for years and years, and it led to seven former officers' guards sent to prison. Like you say, do you think... Well, this doesn't sound like a daft question. Just as you think it was served? No. <laughs> There's only 30% of the truth come out, David. The other 70% is still out there. And it may never ever come out. Now, when these guys were arrested, I thought somebody might have confessed to what was going on to get a lighter sentence. But they haven't. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Because there's some big names involved in that. And, and that's why it will never ever come out. Yeah. Do you know what, as well? I've I seen, uh, I read some 
uh, newspaper archives about the place, about the whole trial. And they said they had the cheek and audacity to say they've all got together and lied. <laughs> now this is this makes me laugh because you've got lads from all over the country, yeah, all in at different years, different times, all point to the same guys and report the same shit what happened. Yeah. Now I was in court one day when there was lads giving evidence against this big John McGee, right? Now he had a pigeon shed at the bottom of the football pitch, but he, that pigeon shed wasn't there when I was there. He must have been there in the early eighties. Now. I saw four lads get in the dock one day and tell the jury that this John McGee was getting them to clean the pigeon shed out and he was bringing them Mars bars in and sweets and he was making, making them masturbate them. Oh, man. Now, he had four lads, Newcastle, Carlisle, uh, down the country, all saying the same thing. So what was the jury thinking about there? That's enough evidence to convict a person, Davy. Mm-hmm. He got away with it. Do you know what I find strange about this is, um, like Benhamsley, it's one of the biggest investigation cases of its kind, sexual abuse, child abuse. Well, it is. It went on for years and years and years, and it's hardly been documented. And you think about there's that. There's been a lot of cover-up on it, Davey. Yeah, you type in Benhamsley on YouTube, there's nothing on there, really. Now, for a man to do that right, getting young lads to masturbate him right, He's been involved in the paedophile ring. Mm-hmm. He had to, he's got to have been. You don't just come up with that, Davy Wright. He's been involved in the paedophile ring, that. Yeah. He's got to have been. There was a guy I was talking to, um, one of the guys, I don't know if I got it on video or not, uh, he said the guards were working the night shift, would go in, middle of the night, get up all the lads out the dorms, get them out of bed, Strip them naked and have them bunny up and up and down the corridor on a night. Now why? Yeah. Like they were why? getting kicks out of watching people do things like I say. There were sick people. It was run by sadistic six people, Davy. Now I think some of them up there they've been devil worshippers and say dramaticus. I do. Yeah. I do. So, you know, your time in Medamsley, um Eric, I'm gonna ask you this. Because a lot of the guys I spoke to, it has affected them. You know, now, the government called this, this this makes me laugh as well, they classed it as historical abuse. Now, I just don't agree with that term at all. Because the lads who suffered in there, who I've, spoke, who I've seen what it's done, it's a life sentence for them. Yeah. Like, they've never been able to commit now. It's led to self-sabotage, it's led, led to suicide. I mean, these lads have had to deal with it, so I don't agree with historical abuse at all. I just don't agree with that term. That's right, Davey. I think that's bang out of order for calling it that. So, back to my question, Eric. Your time in Menonsley, has it had a life, last, lasting yeah. effect on your life? So, in what way can you describe? I was in there for nine, ten weeks, and I'm still serving my sentence now. It's damaged my head. I've got mental health problems, and I admit that. I put my hand on my heart, and I admit that. Mm-hmm. I've never been married, I've never had a family. That's scarred me for the rest of my life. And this is all down to me. That's, yes, that, that's in my head every day. It's crazy. I can imagine Graham was saying the same thing, wasn't he? Mm. See, I know what went on in there, Davy. Not just with me, with other people. Mm-hmm. The violence was shocking. Severe. So it was violent in there, morning, dinner time, tea time and night. Even during the night there was violence. Mm. Do you know what? It, it shows how bad it was, because... The guy, the young, young inmates who were in there were only in there for petty crimes, really. Three months, I think, yeah. is, is the longest time they've got. Those lads in there, no, a six month. Six months. You did four months. If you, if you got, if you got uh, three months, you did nine weeks. Yeah. And if you got six months, you did 16 weeks. Yeah. But these guys were in there for them three, three four, five months. Like, it's shattered their lives. Yeah. If you got six months, they usually put in the kitchens to work. Mm. And that's where you don't want to be. That's right. That's where you don't want to. Now, see, well, I'll touch back up on Neville Husband a little bit. Um, was he didn't work alone. He worked with uh, Leslie... Johnson. Leslie Johnson, that's a guy. Now, he also got six years for yeah. sexual abuse. I think he got nine years, I think. Was it nine years? For the young boy who shot your bridge and 12 lads in Medamsey. They even abused lads after they'd been released from there. Mm. Wow. 
see that this, this podcast it come it come across to us Madamsley, and I'll be honest, Eric, I didn't know what Madamsley was. I was born in eighty one, so it was a little bit. That's right. And then we had started researching it, like us, me and Let. We we've, we've never had a talk to anybody about this, about stuff like this. We've always had a laugh on the podcast. That's right. So it's been really hard, you know. Like we've seen first hand, haven't we, Let? What it has done to you guys. Yeah. You know, it, it's just shattered your lives. Oh, yeah, definitely. And like you say, especially the case with Neville Husband. Yeah. This could have been stopped. Yeah, it could have been stopped in the uh, 70s. Yeah, in 69 yeah. before even Yeah, come. when they moved from Portland, yeah. But that's, that's again, protected from Prison somewhere. Prison service, eh? No. Definitely protected from somewhere because that, when he was caught in that borsal in 69 with them photos, mm -hmm. that should have been a, a fucking red flag. It should have been, shouldn't it? Yeah, it yeah. It, it was it allowed to allowed another to 17 work. years yeah. in Madam's League. So it's been covered up from one institution by another one institution. Yeah. Peter, it is Peter, isn't it? Yeah. To uh, carry on the abuse at another place for years, went on for years. Now, if you worked in the kitchens, you were certainly to be sexually abused and raped. Well, I looked at the police reports and that, and uh, one of them did say something along the lines, if you worked in the kitchen, yeah. you were almost certainly going to be sexually abused yes. or yeah. raped. You're almost selected. He turned yeah. the storeroom into a bedroom. Yeah. No, that, that's something more now. I was scrubbing the chairs out. I had a look at your scrape when he said I looked at a few. I thought he meant braze. Now, that man could have raped me in that church. Or he could have, he could have sexually abused in that church. But for some reason, he needed, he needed to be out there quick. Wow. To go back into the kitchens, wherever he was doing. Mm -hmm. Like you say, uh, Neville Husband was sent to prison. Um, rightfully so. Rightfully so. He should have been shipped off on a boat for me. Definitely all left in a room with all of you lads. Yeah. Mm. Now that, when, that would have been justice for me. When Leslie Johnson and Neville Husband got raised from prison, they both died in natural causes. Yeah. Mm. That's strange, isn't it? Yeah. There should have been, for me, I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this, but I will. There should have been took in the middle of a field and executed. Yes. It's absolutely shocking. But, like you say, I'll say it again. Me and the lads, the podcast team, we went round and met you guys. And it's been an absolute pleasure meeting up with all of you, you know. But it's been so hard emotionally for us as well, you know. Oh, that's right, well, of course. It's been draining, man. It's very... It's very bad listening to this sort of stuff, David, but it's, it's got to be done. Yeah. Now, I was told that the police, when they've took some of the statements off the boys, some of the police officers had to get counselling. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I, I'll be honest, I've been laying in bed with my missus on a night. Obviously, I'm doing my research for the podcast. And she's sat there, this is, she said, all you can hear is you going, fucking hell, Jesus Christ, did that really happen? And I'm yeah, sat, you it's if, it's, if it's hard for us to even listen to it, right. so it, it actually go through it. We used to go through it. You know what I mean? Young lads in there, if they, when the officers were walking about, you could hear the keys rattling. Now, if anybody heard any keys rattling, they just, they were scared because they knew the officers were coming down. That's it. And they would have played like mind games like that, wouldn't they? Oh, aye. Oh. Absolutely brutal. There was a night watchman on there, and a night called Rennick. Mm -hmm. He was a tall fella. Now, if you wanted to go to the toilet during the night, you had to say, I kind of fall out, sir. I heard one lad say, uh, can I fall out, sir? So he went downstairs to the toilet. And on the way back in, he never says, can I fall in, sir? Mm -hmm. And I heard this scream, and this rennet got over, and he just smashed all of his stomach and he winded him for not saying, can I fall in, sir? You see, back to the trials and stuff I spoke to a few lads who did attend the trials Peter told me one of them a top Aye. guy a nice guy Peter a hey, lovely guy yeah. like I know some of the lads got a little bit of compensation you know yeah. there you go there's your compensation lad yeah. be on your way let's not talk about this again but for me there's not enough money in the world no It it's ruined their lives it does Aye. now I've been denied compensation because uh, the governor's dead saying there's no conviction there so the Ministry of Justice have chucked my case out three times. Have you got to appeal again of your all? I can't, I can't do The Ministry of Justice refused to pay me compensation. But I'll look this way. Money won't put my head right, Davy. No. So the last resort now, the solicitor's gone to the criminal injuries. That's my last resort to get compensated. And that's not, that doesn't look good neither. No. I mean, if I get any compensation from the criminal injuries, I'll give it away. It's unbelievable. It's just, like you said, uh, Operation Seabrook. 
Yeah. You've got to take your off to them guys. Oh, that's right. They, they, they worked hard to get it. They did, and it was it was a long, complex yeah. investigation. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've read right into it, and they did do well. Yeah, he uh, lives in my village. The main guy who set uh, the operation away, the, the yeah. chief inspector. I, chief inspector. I see him every day. It's a fair play to that. Boy. He was in my sister's class at school. I lovely lad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. But he can only do. Is, he's only as strong as above him. Let him, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Only at his pay grade. I mean, the guy who abused me in my dormitory, this mad dog, uh, he lived in Concert, he's rich in a Glaswegian. Mm. He lives in Canada now, he lives in Quebec. He emigrated to Canada. Mm. Now, the police said they can't bring this man back because he had dementia. He's probably gone to Canada in case he bumped into any of the inmates. Aye. Uh, he, was, he was a psychopath as well. Absolutely brilliant. A, fr- a friend of mine from Concert lived next door to him when he was little. To this, lived next door to this mad dog. Mm-hmm. His real name was uh, Bill Miller. Now, he was also renowned around Concert for fighting and, and drink and smashing the house up when he came in drunk. Mm-hmm. And his wife left him. A good friend of mine lived next door to him in Concert. Mm-hmm. He was a psychopath. Wow. The reason we have done this podcast as well, I'll touch up on this, Eric, because I say once again, me and the lads, we've been up and met quite yeah. a few guys once we found out we were The reason we've done this podcast is because these sto- these lads' stories have been busted under the carpet, pushed aside, yeah. forgotten about. And to be honest, Joe Public needs to know what happened in there. Yeah, they do, Davey, exactly. And like you say, we they had that uh, they had that regime, the short, sharp shock. No, we we've got one as well. Explain, exploit, expose, and that's exactly what we want to do on this one. It was yeah. ran military style, like a like a prisoner of war camp. It was just a free for all. Now there was one lad uh, was discharged from there and never came home. Never been seen since. Never ever been seen since. Possibly discharged. He's never he never came home. Hmm. I wonder how many. How much Madam's Lee has contributed to suicides? I wonder how many suicides have been. Well, look, quite a few. There's a lot from Newcastle committed suicide before the trial started. The trial when uh, Neville Usmond. And he committed suicide. Yeah. No, there's the reports. I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure on this. There, the guards Neville Usmond used to threaten you if you spoke about these horrors. You'd be found hung in the showers. Yeah, he said you could be uh, self harmed, self harmed, and buried on the football field. And nobody would know. Right. No, I still say this day there's somebody buried up there. I do. Mm. I do. I think there was somebody buried up there at the bottom of the football pitch near where the wood was. Wow. This lad who never returned home. His body could be buried up there. I wonder if they ever investigate that. Or... I don't think it has been investigated, uh, Davy. I don't. Wow. They've gotten away with 70% of it. Crazy. Every officer who worked in there should have been sent to prison. Mm-hmm. There's already two officers come forward and says, when they started work at Medemsley, they were told by all the officers that Neville Usman was a domineering character and he was abusing boys in the kitchen. There's a, they've already come forward. And there's two prison officers who come forward, and all you know, to say that the dad, the dad told them of the violence but he knew nothing about the sexual abuse. Also, a, a former guard's sons came forward. Two, two said, sons. And said, look, my dad was telling us yeah. about... My dad told him about all the violence, but he knew nothing of the sexual abuse. They all did, Davey. Mm. They're going to deny, aren't they? Yeah. See, I spoke to quite a few inmates. Uh, a lot of them didn't work in the kitchens, and when I've asked them, they said, you know, Davey said, we didn't know anything about it. Till no. it came out on trial, you know, it was the, the poor lads in the kitchens who yeah. got it. You know, he said, he said we just we thought they were had a good job in there. You know, like getting food and stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't until years later it come out. Some did know about it, yeah. but um, there were some lads in there abusers who didn't work in the kitchens and all. You know, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine was uh, raped in the cupboard. Off Neville husband or Neville husband and another officer. The other, he didn't get the other, the other officer didn't get convicted of it. There wasn't enough evidence. They tried to say there wasn't enough evidence. Onslow got away with Onslow got away with uh, a lot. 
he got away with murder and he got away with uh, the sexual abuse which he was guilty of guilty of it this is crazy there was one lad in there I saw two officers do them he had a denim coat you know these denim coats you wore were about that long and they were pretty thick yeah now they got a a thick brown shank handle off like you know them floor buffers mm -hmm. off one of them right they got his arms like, and they fed, they fed this uh, stick through his arms like that sleeves yeah and hung him on two girders in the recess like that hung him up like that I it was just a place of horrors this like right. honestly like I was sat uh, I was in the room with him now was a guy who edited our Lit Hope he always does a fantastic job and uh, I was telling Lit some of the stuff you know building up to this yeah and he couldn't believe it yourself could you no it's just horrific the stories no I told the police this uh, there was one lad, he was from, uh, I believe he, this lad came from Hull. Mm -hmm. You know what they made him do? They took him down to the recess. They gave him a Wilkins sword razor shaper and some soap and they made him shave his pubic hairs off. And they gave him this cream. Have you heard of Fiery Jack? Mm -hmm. It was like a cream they used to rub it on the legs and they went to footballers to keep warm. Oh, like deep heat? Yeah. yeah. And they made him rub all that get down his private parts oh. so the lad's on fire what the fuck two officers made him do that that's it's like little to torture isn't it yeah it's mental cruelty it was uh, I could write a book on it Peter on this place I could uh, see I've got a second and on memory Davy. my memory's second and on and yeah. I knew everything what went on in there everything every single thing Every officer who worked in there should have been jailed. Every officer. It was disgraceful. This is some of the worst abuse I had done to me and everybody else. The worst abuse I've seen in my life. Now, I didn't know human beings could treat young boys like this. Mm. Yeah. You see, he was sent in there. He um, had broke the law. He'd been punished. Yeah, yeah. He was a real, nasty man, he was very violent. Yeah, you had to be really bad at it, I know it's not supposed to be all day camp, I get that. Yeah. But this level of brutality is just sadistic. There's no need for it. No. There's no need for it. He was a nasty man, yeah. Stayed with you for the rest of your life. Oh, he does, I. I had a lump on my egg the size of, size of an egg off him when he... That was his favourite trick, the hen peck. I think it started in the military, that. It was a military punishment. You fracture somebody's skull with like that. Oh yeah, you just you do that. Pounded on your head there. Yeah. Well, I just blacked out. Well, is there anything else you want to cover, my mate? Is my it... dad, when my mum and dad come to see us in there, I broke down crying in the visiting room when I had this lump on my head. Mm -hmm. Now I, t I told my dad what had happened. And on the way out, my dad confronted some of the officers. Did he? Yeah, and he was he was told to get out. My dad got my dad got ordered out. I mean, my dad was a big bloke, he was over six foot. Mm. My dad, he was ordered out. So Did that... they just not... Um, Pardon? But would just not talk to him about anything? No, he was, he was just ordered out, I yeah. Did that have any repercussions on you? When... Uh... It sort of, yes. But broken nose didn't like me for some reason. He treated me badly him. He should have been done for attempted murder when he had that garden fought against my throat, Davy. Yeah. He had it pinned against the garden shed you know we never got charged with it see I wonder what they're done in the morning you know when they're starting work oh, we'll, get up, we'll go to work we'll, we'll knock shit out of these lads you know like still remember now he, he wore a long he wore a long prison coat black boots on and he smoked his cigars he was he wasn't a massive he was very tall he wasn't a massive build fella but he was biggish he was well over six foot he was a nasty man so we'll have a quick talk about some of the convictions. Yeah. Okay. So you obviously got Neville husband. Uh -huh. He got, what, 10, 12 years? He got 12 years for uh, raping 12 lads in Medemsey and abusing uh, a nine-year-old boy in Shotley Bridge. Him and uh, mm -hmm. Leslie Johnson, the storm in Medemsey. Yeah. And then you've got Chris of Law. He was saved eight and a half years. Yeah. He got eight and a half years. John McGee, I think he got two years, nine months. Yeah. Two years, nine months. 
Kevin Blakely, two year, ten months for misconduct in a public office, uh-huh. assaults. Uh, Brian Greenwell, puppet. All his yeah. nicknames, Alan Bramley, Bong Ai, all got done for misconduct in the public office. And uh, Neil Sowby and David McGlow were found not guilty. Yeah. And they were both guilty of what they'd done. Crazy. Crazy. Well, listen, I'm going to slowly bring this podcast to it. Yeah, my head. But I tell you what, this has been the hardest one we have ever had to do. Yeah. By far. Yeah. Um, I just want you to know yourself and all the other lads we spoke to we appreciate you coming down oh, and sharing right. your story I know how hard it's been for you guys there is actual helplines for lads who served in Medemsley yeah we can leave their numbers there can we I'm there? still getting counselling now Davey mate you're still getting counselling I still get counselling now yes I wow I've had counselling for two years off the trot uh, eight years ago I've had Another six ones after that. I'm getting Carlton now. Yeah. But I tell you what, this is like a, a shout out to all lads who served at Mansley. You can see we'll leave these um, lines for you to call if you've been affected in any way by this podcast. But hey, uh, like you say, lads, you weren't you you weren't alone. There's other lads who went through this. You didn't deserve this. You had no power over this at all. You know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't hang your heads low. Keep them high. They're the cowards. They're the weak ones. That's right, Davey. They're the scumbags. You have done nothing wrong. You were just right. kids. So hold your chins up high. Be proud because you are the real men in Medemsley for me. You know, and I mean that. That's right. Yeah. There's still a lot of lads feeling the pain from Medemsley now. Yeah. Once you've got permanent damage, it would never, ever go away, Davey. Never. Mm. All this could have been stopped if you've acted on it. But I think it was, with it being that goes that high, mm-hmm. it's just been a massive cover up. Hundred percent. They'll never get. They'll never ever ever get the truth, the whole truth. Mm. Absolutely bizarre. And I know myself sixty percent of the truth, mm-hmm. but there's only thirty thirty percent of it came out. I know a lot more things that went on in there than a lot of people do because I've got a, I've got a second and none memory. All this could have been stopped if the police had acted on it. It just make you wonder who's been involved in this. Exactly. Some of these paedophile rings, you know, they go right high. Do you know what? We'll leave that to the view of you guys at home to make your minds up what you think. I know what I think. Yeah. You know, let knows what he thinks, but it goes higher. It does. 100%. Well, listen, buddy, we're going to close this podcast, mate. So from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of the podcast team, we thank you so, so You're much welcome, for coming Davey. forward. And I tell you what, before I go... A massive shout out to each and every one of you lads who come forward, sent me them videos in. Absolutely brilliant. I know how hard it was for you guys to come forward and yourself, Eric. You know, it, it, it really takes a lot to come and talk about something like this. It needs to be out there to realise, for people to realise what actually went on in there. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who don't realise what went on in there, Davey. Yeah. There's a lot of people who don't understand it. There's a lot of does, mm-hmm. but there's a, there's a lot who don't understand what actually happened. Yeah. Until it happens to some people who don't who don't know what it's like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you what, hats off to you guys. But I uh, I just like to say as well, a lot of you will be noticing Paul Pounder and Vulture is not on the podcast. Uh no, nothing's happened. I tell you ex- explain why he's not on. Uh with this podcast it goes really deep. Um I started this podcast and what I've done is because if I get any backlash off this, off any authorities or anything like that, I just want everyone to know I'm so responsible for this. I'll push this. It's had nothing to do with my team. You know, so that's the reason why. But he will be back on with us in the future. Um, and like you said, it's coming to close. Oh, before I go, a massive thank you to our sponsor. Oh, yes. Gleam and Clean. And I'll give her a shout out. Uh, Jane and the girls are doing a fantastic job. Uh, I'll leave the link for their Facebook page in the dis- dis- description box below. Yeah. And you can get in touch with them doing a great job. So thank you, Jane and the girls from Gleam and Cleaning. But uh, once again, I reckon, thank you so, so much. Yeah, I feel coming. better getting this out in the open. It had to be done, Davey. Do you feel better? Yeah, people no- need to know what went on in there. Mm-hmm. When I spoke to ITV last week, I said they need to know what goes on in there, but they only, the ITV only uh, put so much on. Yeah, yeah. 
we uh, we you kind of put things on the boat. People who haven't had a conviction, see. Mm, yeah, well, I think we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna go for it, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go for it, mate. Well, look, I hope you find some closure in this, mate. And I'm glad you've come off, and I hope it it's made you yeah, feel better. I really do, mate. But honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You're welcome, Davy. It's yeah. been a pleasure. You too, mate. So listen, guys. Um, what I want you to do is, if you don't mind, share this podcast on everything. Yeah. Your Facebooks, whatever you can, just share it because this story needs to be out there. And uh, thank you again for watching, from yourself and the team. Thank you. Take care, guys. Hello, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed part one. Uh, I'm just letting you know that there will be a part two, uh, and I will be in that part two. Now, the reason why I wasn't in the first one is because I just couldn't make it down to uh, Arlipool in order to film it. So, part two will be coming very shortly. And in the meantime, I'd just like to thank Dave, Vulture, and Lit, and the rest of the crew for a fantastic job that they uh, have done on this on this documentary. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, the old work that Dave and that and crew have done uh, in order to make this is absolutely unbelievable. And I'd just like to thank the inmates of Medemsley for uh, coming forward and making this possible. Uh, and to all the lads who uh, are doing the interviews and I've, uh, I've had the go and had to come forward because uh, it's not easy. Believe me, it's not easy. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the first one and uh, I look forward to uh, playing my part. So I'd just like to say, tune in. I'm sure all the uh, information you need will be down below in the description and I will see you in the next part. Thank you very much. Thugs! 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 Thugs!